All right. The uh, ex exposure. I wonder if I can do that through my camera settings on my computer. Mm, no matter. I guess I'll just have to look like the uh, the ghost of Christmas past. It's fine. All right. Let me just start this up. done just let that play and then we'll get rolling easy peasy lemon squishy oh that's too much oh now it's just highlighting the neck beard all right i quit on this light it's fine we're just gonna roll with it Good evening, everybody. Tonight we're going to be debating: Is the solar system fake? And to get us started off, start us off. Sorry, wits it gets it is here, and uh, wits it the floor is all yours. Good evening, everybody. Tonight we're going to be debating: um, Is how the long solar is it supposed system? to be? I forgot uh, to ask. Uh, this here, uh, well, we can the the debate itself. Uh, we'll probably try to ra roll it out like around two hours if we can. Uh, it's usually what we aim for. If it goes a little longer, that's fine. But uh, I was getting a little feedback there, but I think it stopped. I'm not sure who it was, but uh, we're good to go. So, uh, what's it? Uh, 10 minutes on the clock, and it's all yours. Cool. 10 minutes. All right. I'm going to actually try to keep up with it. All right. So, I'm going to share my screen real fast. Sure. All right. <clears throat> so, we're talking about is the solar system fake? Basically, geocentrism versus heliocentrism. Uh, I didn't really have time to put a specific uh, presentation together, but I have a little something about it. I call this how Einstein's flip-flop bury the heliocentric model. I definitely can't cover all of it in 10 minutes, but we're going to go through it. So here's a quote from Einstein. It says, while I was thinking of this problem in my student years, I came to know the strange result of Michelson's experiment. That's the Michelson-Morley experiment. Um, and he comes down to say, since then, I've come to believe that the motion of the Earth cannot be detected by any optical experiment, though the Earth is revolving around the sun. So <clears throat> he just straight up says, I believe the Earth is moving around the sun but I can't actually detect it with any optical experiment. So this is, of course, that test. They shot perpendicular light rays. They expected that there would be what's called a fringe shift or an interference pattern of a certain amount based on the assumed rotate or revolution speed of the Earth around the sun. And they did not see this. So what they actually said was that the apparatus contracted in the direction of motion um, with length contraction. So it just made it look like the Earth wasn't moving. It's called the uh, most famous felt experiment in history because it was a quote unquote no result. Although if you look closely, there actually was a slight fringe shift. It was just nowhere near the amount expected. Um, so that's what he's talking about when he says, well, we can't use optical experiments, you know, optics being uh, primarily light. So then afterwards, um, or after this test, they basically had something on the table that they had to try to figure out. And this guy sums it up pretty good. Um, he says, the problem which now faced science was considerable for there seemed to be only three alternatives. Uh, the first was that the Earth was standing still, which meant scuttling the whole Copernican theory and was unthinkable. Uh, this is his Einstein, the life and times. And Copernican principle or theory is, of course, the idea that the Earth does not occupy a special or unique position. Here's Einstein again, and the reason that Einstein's important is because his theory is still the mainstream consensus to try to claim that the Earth is flying around the sun. 
Uh, he says here that the struggle back in the day, if it was heliocentric or geocentric, seem, it was meaningless. Uh, either coordinate system can be used with equal justification. Now, that's his claim because it actually cannot be equally justified, and we'll cover that tonight. But he says the sun is at rest and the earth moves, or the sun moves and the earth is at rest, are two uh, equally valid statements. It's just about which uh, coordinate system you prefer. So here he says that the motion of the earth in space cannot be made perceptible in terrestrial experiments, meaning no experiment on the earth. So optical nor terrestrial experiments and that all attempts to, to measure the orbit of the earth around the sun were negative. And that before he put the theory of relativity forward, it was difficult to even come up with the reason why that was. Um, here is Steven Weinberg, uh, well-respected physicist. And he explains if we were to adopt the frame of reference like Tycho's in which the Earth is at rest, that's the Ty Tycho Brahe Tychonic model, uh, then the distant galaxies would seem to be executing circular turns once a year. Oh, wow, the galaxy just executes a circular turn once a year? That just makes way too much sense. No way that's real. Um, and he just explains that even with relativity, uh, if you apply general relativity, the enormous motion would create forces akin to gravitation, which would act on the sun and planets and give the motions of the Tychonic theory. Um, and he explains that he brought this up in an unpublished Proposition 43 that did not make it to the Principia. Uh, he acknowledged that Tycho's theory could be true if some other force besides ordinary gravitation acts on the suns and planets. I'm going to try to, I'm covering quite a bit, but I'm just going to try to get through it. So anyway, this is uh, Proposition 43 that didn't make the final publication, which is interesting. And he says, in order for the Earth to be at rest in the center of the system of the sun, planets, and comets, there is required both universal gravity and another force, in addition, that acts on all bodies equally according to the quantity of matter in each of them and is equal and opposite to the accelerative gravity in which the Earth tends to the sun. And thus, celestial bodies can move around the Earth at rest as in the Tychonic system. That's Isaac Newton himself saying, in fact, yes, the Earth can be in the center. Um, here is Einstein, uh, which is a very interesting and telling quote. He says, but when I was a student, I saw that experiments of this kind had already been made, in particular by your compatriot uh, Mickelson. He proved that one does not notice anything on the earth that it moves, but that everything takes place on earth as if the earth's in a state of rest. So we can just get, get this idea out that, oh, all science has proven that the solar system's real and we're flying around it. That's absolutely patently false. Um, here's more. I'm going to have to skip through some of this. Here's relational mechanics. So there's two important things to be familiar with. There's something called kinematics and dynamics. Kinematics is geometry, basically. So the geomet geometric paths that the planets move, for example, that's called kinematics, just the actual geometry and the path that they move. Dynamics is what causes that to happen, the force that would cause them to move. Now, everyone knows that just with the term relativity, you should understand there's a kinematic equivalence, meaning if I'm standing on the road and I see a carriage go by, it's like, well, the carriage can be moving or I can be moving. That's basically the principle of relativity. And so relativity says, sure, everything looks like the Earth's in the center and not moving, but just because that's our relative position, uh, they're equally valid. So it's a kinematic equivalence. No one could ever dispute that. That's actually the only way the heliocentric model has even gotten to this point is to claim that it's kinematically equivalent, as in the way the planets move and we see them, it works equally in both scenarios. But there's also a dynamic equivalent. So if anyone's interested in reading on if up on it, this is Relational Mechanics by Andre Assis. Um, and he breaks down all the math, all the physics using both Newtonian and Einsteinian mechanics, showing that 100%, you cannot claim that uh, di the dynamic equivalence does not exist. He proves that it does. Here he shows right here, this analysis shows clearly that in general relativity, kinematically equivalent situations are not dynamically equivalent. And what he actually shows here is that there's a problem with the relativistic approach. It doesn't work. Um, but I don't have enough time to explain all of that. But basically he says, uh, so if you let the Coriolis term become similar to the Lorentz magnetic force, it might be called a gravitational magnetic field generated by the rotation of the set of distant galaxies, meaning that the angular momentum of all the cosmos moving around the earth will actually keep it in place. Um, and then he goes on to say the flattened figure of the earth, of course, assuming it's a sphere, not what this is about, or Foucault's pendulum can no longer be utilized as proofs of the earth's real rotation. I've sent this to many PhD astronomers, astrophysicists. They've asked for the dynamic equivalence. None of them have come back with anything other than concession. Here is Dr. Luca Popov. We got a few minutes left. He wrote Newtonian mocking analysis of the neo tychonian model of planetary motions, where he breaks down again the math and physics, showing that there is an, another interesting remark that follows from this analysis. If one put the whole universe in accelerated motion around the Earth, 
The pseudo potential corresponding to pseudo force will immediately be generated. The pseudo potential then causes the universe to stay in that very state of motion without any need of, for exterior forces acting upon it. So this is saying actually using the Newtonian framework, all the physics, all the dynamics is satisfied. The universe, quote unquote, would perpetually move around the earth. It would only need a primary mover. Uh, an important part here is we saw that Einstein and Newton were explaining, well, if there was an uh, equal and opposite reaction or there was an additional force, well, that's what you would have with the entire cosmos moving around the earth. You would have a centrifugal force, right? And so one might say, oh, well, the centrifugal force would cause it to keep going in a straight line. But no, there's also a Coriolis force that's twice the magnitude. And in this scenario, it would be a real force as opposed to this pseudo fictitious force where all the inertial forces are fictitious in the fairy tale that is heliocentrism. And so it would actually be twice the magnitude, a radially inward accelerative force that would keep it in place. All the physics are satisfied. I don't have time to explain the, the actual problem with Newtonian and Einsteinian mechanics on the galactic scale, but it's obvious everyone knows this. For example, um, if you have if you look at the actual galaxy rotations, the Newtonian mechanics only yields about one tenth the value required to even satisfy the physics. Here's Einstein, actually uh, a letter to Ernst Mach, the Machian principle, basically the one long story short, uh 200 years it took 200 years after newton for then mock to come around and be like wait newton didn't even consider the rest of the universe he only considered the solar system so therefore assume that if the sun has a bigger mass we go around it if you account for the entire universe which newton literally didn't even count for it just assumed it was absolutely just like there like a background then the physics would necessitate you say that the earth could be in the center uh this is einstein writing back to him saying yes you're correct and it would even actually drag the pendulum around um and then this is him saying sexual relativity says there's no e theory gets over to general relativity and fit 1915 and he's like oh i was wrong when i said there was no ether there has to be an ether um and then he says the story of ether is by no means finished it's continued by the relativity theory so i got about a minute left so we're gonna move real quickly some people will say oh well in order for this to happen things would have to go faster than the speed of light that's impossible relativity itself says that in the presence of uh gigantic masses that the speed of light could actually be superseded. Einstein himself straight up says that uh, according to the general theory of relativity, the law of const the constancy of the velocity of light, which constitutes one of the two fundamental assumptions in the special theory of relativity and to which we have already frequently referred, cannot claim any unlimited validity. So almost no one here has ever heard that, but that's the truth. That's Einstein's own words. The speed of light is not definitive, even according to relativity. Here's a geocentric path just fitting right within a torus field. Here's the more uh, geocentric path of planets, and you see it has order and it's coherent. It fits right within a torus field. 10 seconds. Okay, so long story short, um, there was an ether vortex measured, and there's no answer for that other than the Earth being stationary, so we can get into it. All right. Well, we'll stop the screen share there. And I want to remind everybody hanging out in the live chat right now, if I sound a little grimy, it's because I'm legit talking through a 1950s microphone. I left my new one at the jam space. Uh, so Dallas, Texas, that's where we're going to be here in a few days. Uh, if you could stop the screen share there, what's it? Uh, oh, sorry. That's all right. I just have to pop the Zoom uh, open again to do that. But yeah, uh, if you want to end it on your end, that's fine. And then we'll get into the next part. But yeah, Dallas, Texas is where we're going to be uh, hanging out uh, for our live debate con four. You won't want to miss it, folks. Uh, we have our tickets linked in the description. Uh, I'm going to be there. Uh, you know, what's it's going to be there? Leo, I think, is going to be the MVP of the day. Uh, I think he's got a lot of debates going on. Matt Delahunty is going to be there. Aaron Raw, David Wood, uh, all kinds of great speakers. You won't want to miss it. But in the meantime, let us know where you're hanging out. We'd love to know where our, uh, where, where you guys are tuning in from and where you're going to be on November 4th when the debate con is happening. I'm in Nova Scotia right now. Where are you hanging out? What's it? Florida. Florida? Well, you'll be in Texas in a few days. What about you, T-Jump? Do you mind telling us where you're at? The round earth. He's on the round earth. Well, we're going to hand it over to T-Jump on that. Let us know where you're at in the live chat and T-Jump, 10 minutes on the floor. Yeah, so the debate topic today is, is the solar system real? The answer is yes, the solar system is real. Um, there have been numerous methodologies that have, can be used in order to verify the existence of the solar system in astronomy. There's radio astronomy, infrared astronomy, refracting telescopes, infrared radiation, optical astronomy, high energy astronomy with X-ray astronomy, gamma ray astronomy, UV astronomy. All of these different methodologies can be used to verify and validate many of the facts in the solar system that can be used to provide consilience to get the exact same results around many fields in many countries of tens of thousands of different independent variables that can be verified all by these different methods to be the exact same thing. 
and the flat earthers are like, no, -uh. I don't understand math and, and science and stuff. No. But they can just cry all they want. We don't really care because science makes discoveries. Flat Earth doesn't make discoveries. Uh, so if you just want to go to Google Scholar, you can just start reading the papers. Edge of the solar system, large-scale chaos in the solar system, abundance of elements in the solar system, um, evolution of the solar system, nubile gases in the solar system, x-rays from solar system objects. All of these are discoveries which have been made and peer-reviewed by academic sources that can be verified with novel testable predictions. That's what real science is. Flat Earth is just making stuff up. They say, no, -uh. they use what's called post hoc rationalization, which is objectively fallacious. And the fact is that they are crank science. Crank scientists use quote mining, like as we saw earlier today, misunderstanding science, misunderstanding math. Uh, don't verify the field. Don't publish peer review. Don't do their own research and don't publish or do any discoveries. If Flat Earth wants to be taken seriously, they need to make their own kind of a NASA, which makes discoveries equivalent to those made by NASA and other scientific bodies around the world. Until they do that, they are a joke. And I'll end there. All right. Well, I'll turn that preamp back up so everybody can hear me again. Uh, I'll remind everybody once again, uh, links are in the description for the tickets to the live debate con. Uh, and we also have a link to our crowdfund. You see the thermometer next to the screen there. Uh, so if you donate to the crowdfund, you can get all kinds of amazing perks like a one-on-one -on -one with James at the maximum level. Uh, you know, if you want to tell him how, how you can't stand hearing me talking in this old microphone, you'd like to see me stop, you know, you can let him know. Uh, second tier down, you can uh, get a signed picture of your favorite speaker. Uh, so definitely check out those links in the description. I'm going to pull out here, guys. We're going to kick it into an open discussion. Uh, we'll put it over to you, Witsit, to uh, respond to what you just heard there. Uh, I mean, there's not much to respond to. There's just a bunch of ad homs and poisoning the well fallacies <laughs> and uh, oh, and red, red herring because we're not talking about flatter. We were talking about is the solar system real, which is the idea that the Earth revolves around the sun with a bunch of planets in an ever-expanding universe. That's the debate, not about, I think flat earthers are stupid. You said something about no peer-reviewed. I just showed you published peer-reviewed papers showing the dynamic equivalence, and you said, no, I don't like math and physics and stuff. Okay, well, let's see if you can rebut the math and physics then. So what, what's wrong with the Newtonian, uh, neo-Tychonian analysis of the dynamic equivalence? Or do you not know what that is that we can discuss? Absolutely none of them support flat earth or reject the solar system. So that's the problem. Every single academic source agrees there is a solar system. That's the problem. So I don't, I don't need to discuss any of it. I don't need to know any of the math because every single paper academically published supports the solar system. So if you're quoting a paper that's academically published, it agrees with the solar system. I don't really want to hear your misinterpretations and your misunderstandings of math. It's not really worth my time. I don't really care. What I want to see is I want you to build an institute like NASA make discoveries under the flat earth no solar system model publish your papers in peer review so other people can check them like nasa does till then i really don't care what you don't understand yeah i know i get, I get you're projecting your own intellectual aptitude. you're gonna get really uncomfortable that's what's gonna happen but it's all good we can i'm gonna keep it cool while you're clearly about to get very uncomfortable okay so that's a published paper about the newtonian neo tychonian analysis of the dynamic equivalence of a geocentric model and a heliocentric model. I think it's very obvious that you don't know what that means. It's okay. But if you just respond with more ad homs, it isn't going to change anything. It is a peer reviewed paper saying that if the earth is stationary and in the center and everything moved around it, that you can use both Einsteinian and Newtonian mechanics to show that it's perfectly valid. And here's the real kicker. <sighs> The geocentric Ooh. model is more valid. So if you want to talk about the actual subject, there's no way for like two straight hours you can just add on me, right? I mean, you got to do better than that. So like, do you, do you know any of this? Can, how about this? Let's, let's do it like this. Can you give me one piece of exclusive evidence that the Earth is moving around the sun? See, this is the example of the post hoc rationalization I mentioned earlier. All pieces of evidence can be explained by infinitely many hypotheses. You can make up fat pixie leprechauns made the world five seconds ago and put delusions in us and that would explain everything it doesn't make a difference if you can explain the past data what matters is novel predictions flat earthers have zero science has a million science wins i don't really care about your non-published non-peer-reviewed paper that is fake it's not interesting to me at all i know all right that. so can i share my screen since he, he's lied three times now so we're gonna what? thoroughly just have sure, to sure, go for this it. Guy. you okay. can share go ahead 
So now we're going to show the paper that's fake. The paper's yep. fake and it's not peer reviewed. Just remember yep. that's that was his response here. I'll give you a second there to get your screen yeah. share up. Yeah, let me find it. Excellent. I mean, I don't know what can you not just admit maybe you haven't read the paper, you know, I'm like pretty sure I debated it? the guy who wrote it actually on my really? channel. Really Luca Popov, you you debated a, pretty a sure. astrophysicist. Pretty sure. That's crazy. You debated the PhD. So what, do you have the paper yet? Are you going to pull up the paper? Wait, wait. Can you admit you don't know anything about the paper? <laughs> Are you going to pull it up or not? Like I've no, read a I number don't. of these fake published papers about geocentrism from a number of people on my channel fake. and they're all fake. So please pull it up. Okay. This is hilarious. Yeah. And let's bring up the paper and discuss. I will. I have to look up the paper. I have to look up. It's all good. Take your time. <laughs> I keep getting the screen uh, switched over there. Ooh, I better get the ticker back on. Uh, but once again, uh, everybody hit the like, hit the sub, and we're going to carry on here once, uh, Okay, so so just to show the there. name of the paper real fast, because I have to look through my PDFs. We'll show the name again because everyone's got Google. Link. You know, conveniently it is 2023. Everyone's got Google. I don't know why it's not showing this screen. Share screen. Here it is. Okay. So Dr. Luca Popov, Newtonian mocking analysis of the neo tyconian model of planetary motions. Just to make sure everyone's clear, your current rebuttal is this paper is fake. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then let's go to the next one. The next one here. This is an entire book. <laughs> okay. Relational mecha mechanics Books by Andreas. Published papers. Is this, is this also fake? Yeah, so the fake books aren't published papers, so anybody can publish a book. Uh, you know, it's not just anybody. It's a professor in physics. Yeah, crazy people publish books all the time. It's it. That's not an accomplishment. Where it's is my so published beautiful. paper? I wanted a published paper in an academic period. There it journal. is. There it is. What? So, And we'll actually find the actual PDF. And what's so funny is I actually talked to you. You said you debated this guy. Just you're... I, you're just making stuff up, but I actually well, I debated was a number of physicists who claim to be flat earthers okay. who publish papers. So we're not talking about that, flat was, earth. that was the argument. Yeah, I know you desperately want to poison the well. No, geocentrism, yeah, flat earth, same thing. Doesn't make a difference. They're both they're literally cranks. not the same thing. They are they are okay. the same. They're just cranks who don't understand science. That's all it is. But you do you know what dynamic equivalence means? Dynamic means uh variable system and equivalence means that there's some equal system between those know. two things. And, That's what it means. In the terms of heliocentric... Do, do, you have, do you have any discoveries for me? Any dude, discoveries? dude, there's a kinematic and dynamic equivalent. Do you have any discoveries? I, I want a discovery. You're, you're, All right, let's, just, let's stop the screen share there. Is it going to get Wait, no, no, don't, no, don't stop the screen share. I'm still looking up. I still I haven't found okay. any... I haven't found this paper in any academic journal yet. Dude, okay. and like, I, I think it's crazy that you're this desperate, but... um, So what I want to know... I though, found papers let's... saying this guy is a crank... This is a published paper in Cornell <laughs> University saying he's a crank. That uh, I found in self contradiction. So, so, and, and, and you know, do you know what the genetic fallacy is? All right, space. hold on a second there, Woodsit. Let's let him speak for a little bit. Wait, wait hey, can you help me out? Is this it, guy debating what, right what, now, or what, am I tripping, or is he just insulting the whole time? Maybe you can help me out. With that. Well, I, I, he has had a lot less time to speak as for right now, so I'm going to let him have the floor uh, where he had his thoughts. So over to you, T Jump. So this is a paper that shows he's a crank. Luka Popov has attempted to advance making physics by maintaining that the heliocentric system must be replaced by Tycho Bream's geocentric system. We show that while geocentrism relies on max contention that accelerates relative, this contention is unstable because blah, 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 blah. This is just shows he's a crank. So yeah, he's a crank. Um, do you have any actual discoveries for me? Yeah, so he's got nothing. And, and I'm not going to lie, like this is... In self-contradiction, Mechian geocentrism Where entails is the mod absolute now? space by Herbert Harmon, actual published peer-reviewed wow. Cornell University. We only mod one way. I guess T Jump has all the juice or something. Well, no, I asked. I have asked multiple times. Do you have any discoveries? Was I? Me? Can you? Can you just? You look really ridiculous. You're interrupting and ad homing. Is the that a no? Thing. Well, let's let's let him respond to that point there, and we'll try to carry on from there. And it, w once again, if uh, you can for our audience, uh, what's it uh, tied into uh, how this shows that uh, the solar system is fake? Uh, just to remind our audience right, uh, how we're tying all this together. Okay. And you can yeah. and, and, end and, the screen share and now. now. It's so I'm going to talk a... again, Great. right? Can, can, let's end the screen end share the screen if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> is this is bad. This better change, bro, because I, it's not worth my time to come here and do this. 
to be interrupted and insulted the whole time. This dude, clearly he's uncomfortable. He knows nothing about Can you get this. on with the point? Because I know you don't know how to debate, but if you could get on with the point, that'd be great. Okay. So do you have any discoveries? Don't interrupt me. All right, just one don't... second there, T. John. I don't want to put you on mute, but uh, I'll have to let him respond just right quick, and then we'll pass it back to you. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, back to you, what's it? Okay. So all he's had so far is poisoning the well, ad homs, red herrings, and then a genetic fallacy. So when we're talking about this published paper, he claimed there's none that exist and that, that it was fake. Now I've shown the whole room what it is. I now have the actual PDF pulled up as well. It's a real paper by a real physicist, okay? And it has all the math and physics in it. So a genetic fallacy is where you discredit the information or argument based on the source of the information. It's very remedial. It's a very remedial fallacy. If you want to actually dispute the physics or math, we could happily do that. But I think that this is a tactic because you don't know them. The point is that if the earth is Five in the center of the cosmos and everything was moving around it, there is a dynamic equivalence. Do you know what that means? So which is again, just showing he's ignorant of all of the topics, all of the field. He's saying, oh, hey, look, a crank published a paper. Therefore, it's correct. That's not how science works. So he doesn't know that. But again, the thing I asked for is where are your discoveries? Uh, my discoveries, NASA Perseverance Rover landed on Mars in February, exploring the crater and has made significant discoveries, including identifying the presence of ancient river deltas and collecting rock samples and re will return them to Earth. This is a discovery. Where are your discoveries, Flurf? Okay. Yeah. And like, I can't believe you guys allow this. But anyway, um, so we're not talking about flat Earth. I know that this is your death. I asked a question. You... Can you stop interrupting me? No, I asked a question. I want an answer to my question. Where are your discoveries? Okay, don't interrupt me. Be a big no. Boy. If we if we do, what need is to go going into... on, dude? Because I <laughs> will do... actually leave. I'm I'm. Right. This dude doesn't have juice over me where I'm like so beneath him I can't speak. Well, I was gonna say if we do need you to are. move into like a one minute See? back and forth. <laughs> if we need to move into a one minute back and forth, if you guys, you guys. Well, are there's all no really back and forth. No, no, I, I'm not interested in in hearing your words right now. What I want is an answer to my question: Where are your discoveries? I don't want to hear your. There are people here that like this guy. Okay, where are your discoveries? You have to answer the question. If you don't, I interrupt you. That's how it works. Where are your discoveries? But you ignore five questions I asked. So you don't have any discoveries, and if I just I listed one. Why are you interrupting me again? Because you lied. So I listed one. Perseverance Rover discovered Bro, uh, significant discoveries, what? including identifying Dude. the perseverance of ancient river deltas and collecting rock samples. There you go. There is one discovery. So you lied. There's a discovery. Where are your discoveries? I promise you, and I'm saying this so James can see it. If the rest of this debate is this dude condescendingly interrupting me every time I speak, I will not come back on modern day debate. That's a promise. It would be better for it. Where are your discoveries? Just so you know, just so you know, I, I promise. Because answer it's not, the question. I'm trying to. Well, okay. Yeah, I'm saying, literally let's, let's waiting for you to answer the question. Without, without, yeah, without like hyperanalyzing, let's just see if we can answer the question and carry on from there, guys. You're actually advocating what he's doing. That's what, that's pissing me off. I'm going to leave. Any so, day, any day. You've okay, had five minutes. I, bro, you said my discoveries. Where are your discoveries? Yes. First of all, don't interrupt me. First of all, you don't have any discoveries. I literally just list, listed one. All right, just I one second there, TJ. We'll just have to let him respond. So I quit. So laughably immature. Everything that you listed isn't exclusive to heliocentrism anyway. So if I pretended. Oh, you have all those discoveries. Oh, perseverance on Mars. Oh, there's a rover on Mars. Everything you named isn't exclusive to heliocentrism anyway. Okay, so now that we debunked that, here are my discoveries. The fact that in 1933, Fritz Wicki saw that the actual relativistic prediction of the galaxy clusters needing 99% more mass than it was actually predicted showed that relativity cannot explain why the galaxies don't escape the galaxy clusters. Not Edwin, Hubble in the 20s, Edwin Hubble's in the 20s showed that actually that the, the Earth seems to be in the center even according to distant galaxies. Not a discovery. They had to update the model. There's two discoveries that completely... No, neither of those are discoveries. So, so the first thing, again, you just don't understand the philosophy of science. Saying that... Some Something can't explain something else isn't a discovery. That's not how discoveries work. Secondly, your first thing you said, again, that's post hoc rationalization. You need to Google that. I know you don't know philosophy. You don't know science. You don't know math. You don't know anything. But post hoc rationalization is when you say, 
I can explain the data with something else. So every time you say, oh, that data isn't exclusive to your model, that's just you being dumb because that's not how evidence works. Everybody who knows basic, basic science and basic, basic like kindergarten level philosophy know that you can explain multiple data sets with any different number, infinitely many possible alternatives. That doesn't make it not evidence with it. That just means you're dumb. So yes, that is evidence okay. that we've sent rovers to Mars. We have made discoveries. That is not evidence of the flat earth or the, your silly model. And nothing you listed was actually a discovery. What you said is it can't be explained by it. That's just post hoc rationalization. What are your discoveries? Because I have some, I'm gonna list another one for you. Phosphine in Venus. In September 2020, scientists detected traces of phosphine in Venus's atmosphere, a potential indicator of biological activity. Discovery by us, not by you. Where are your discoveries? This is the most disrespectful I think I've ever been by a platform. Don't interrupt me. I know you don't have impulse control issues. Okay, so I did give specific discoveries, okay? In 1933, it was discovered by Fritz Zwicky that when he observed the galaxy clusters, that it only had 1% of the mass predicted by relativity to prevent the galaxies from escaping the cluster. That's when they then had to ad hoc come up with the idea of dark matter saying there was 99% of undetectable, undefined matter there that we just can't explain or actually detect. That's called a discovery. Do you understand, t -Jump? No, that's not a discovery. That's saying there's something we can't explain yet. That's called an argument from ignorance. So saying, here's a model. This model doesn't explain this fact. That isn't evidence of hypothesis B. That's not how evidence works. Again, this is, you don't understand basic philosophy. You don't understand basic fallacies because you're a flurf. And so it's typical. Simply saying this can't be explained by X is not evidence of Y. It's called basic argument from ignorance fallacy. So that's not a discovery. You again, don't know what a discovery is. I'll, I'll give you an exa another example. Water on the moon, ongoing research and missions such as NASA's lunar re reconnaissance orbiter have provided evidence of water ice on the moon's surface. That's a discovery, a discovery, boom, fact about the universe discovered. Not something odd, but this model can't explain blah, blah, blah. No, it's discovery about the solar system. By it not being, just, you're literally perfect. lost. All right, you, you guys are taking about 45 seconds each, so I'm going to put on a 45-second timer each, and we're going to bounce it. So over to you, what's it? Okay, so it was objectively discovered, meaning it was the first time it had ever been observed. It was discovered. It was an astronomical discovery that the galaxy clusters, they observed it in astronomy and discovered that the galaxy cluster only had 1% of the mass it was supposed to have, it was discovered. The amount of mass in the galaxy cluster was a discovery, just like Edwin Hubble discovered. No one knew this prior to Edwin Hubble finding it. That's why it's a discovery that the distant galaxies moved in relation to the Earth. Five seconds. Why, why he then had to propose a new ad hoc explanation. Do you understand that those are discoveries or are you just going to uh, add on? Uh, Over to you, T-Jump. If you lift up a rock and find a worm, that's a discovery. I mean, that's phenomenal. But the topic of the debate is, is the solar system real? So when I ask for discoveries, I know this tiny brain doesn't understand this. You need discoveries that indicate the FLIRF model, which I'm including in the helio, the geocentric model, the FLIRF model. So it's just the FLIRF model. We're going to call it all the FLIRF model. You have to give discoveries that that model predicts or entails or indicates that model. You haven't done this. Like all of the predictions about dark energy and the extra gravitational force of solar systems. If a solar system is real, if a galaxy is real, that indicates the solar system is real. This is not, this is not debatable. Five seconds. So you need to give a discovery that contradicts the solar system, the heliocentric model and you're giving those that agree with it okay and this is and obviously i hope the uh, audience can see that this is called sophistry the intention to mislead the audience with fallacious arguments because he doesn't know about any of this so those discoveries were specifically refutations of the heliocentric model i'll give some more though which is that they've now had to update that the accelerative expansion model which actually comes from the edwin hubble discovery of the fact that the distant galaxies moved in relation to the earth in a central position which was specifically not predicted by the heliocentric model they proposed the idea of dark energy to now explain that space is 
expanding super luminal speeds over four times the speed of light, and they don't know what dark energy is to this day. A, he a geocentric model has no problem. It doesn't have accelerative expansion, and everything moves in relation to the Earth because the Earth is in the center. Five All seconds. astronomical observations ever show the Earth in the center. So everything Witt said is just painfully stupid. Dark energy exists whether we're in the center or not. So complaining about dark energy just shows he doesn't understand his own model. Because guess what? Everything is expanding out in every direction, whether we're the center or whether the sun is the center. So literally, dark matter and dark energy tell you nothing about whether or not the sun or the earth is at the center of the sun. It's completely irrelevant. Both data sets for extra gravity in other galaxies and expansion of the universe are there whether we're the center or not. He's just saying things that he doesn't like about real science and complaining about it and thinking that, well, he disagrees with it, therefore it works for his model. No, you need to provide evidence of something that shows Five the world, Earth is the center and not the sun is the center. That's 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 your problem. And we you don't have that. We have sent sh satellites that go around the sun, land on planets, get data, and send the data back. That's a discovery based on the heliocentric model you have right. nothing. Okay, and I, I guess this is gonna, the whole debate is just gonna be him baselessly asserting victory and avoiding the specificity of the actual physics I'm bringing up because he doesn't understand it, but it, we'll let the audience decide. So again, even if I granted you that the probes went around the sun and people landed on Mars and all this stuff, According to relativity, you can't tell if it's you or the Earth that's moving. So even with the inertial forces in your model, they would be fictitious. In a geocentric model, they would be actual forces, inertial forces. There would be a kinematic and dynamic equivalence. So none of that would even be exclusive to the heliocentric model. Secondly, when we specifically tried to measure the motion of the Earth, it was always a negative result. There's not one piece of evidence. And I'm asking again, can you give one piece of exclusive evidence that the Earth moves? around the sun gravity there you go how about let's go with another one um osiris rex mission october 2020 nasa's osiris rex spacecraft successfully collected a sample from the near earth asteroid Bennu. this is based on all of the equations that demonstrate the heliocentric model that prove gravity goes inwards towards objects with greater mass um, and this has been a discovery that's been proven so there you go, done. And again, you haven't given any examples of anything that indicates geocentrism, nothing. You keep saying, hey, here's facts about other solar systems, about relativity, which doesn't say anything about heliocentrism. It's just, hey, relativity that's can't that's tell the difference. Great, that isn't evidence of your model. Again, that's an argument from ignorance, um, which it doesn't understand basic philosophy. And they say, ah, but it can be explained by multiple multiple hypotheses. post hoc rationalization, this was covered by basic philosophy 101 which it needs basic education. This is funny. Like all you have is atoms. Um, so the evidence is all astronomical observations ever show that Earth's in the center. The current heliocentric model literally says, yes, it looks like we're in the center and that all astronomical observations will look like we're in the center because the universe is accelerating and expanding in all directions. And it uses the analogy of like an ant on a balloon that's blowing up. And since the balloon's so much bigger than the ant, as it looks around, it thinks it's in the center, but it's actually not in the center. It's just expanding in all directions or a raisin in a loaf of bread in the oven, which is the infamous example that Hubble gave to explain the distant galaxy showing us in the center. When you say I have no evidence here, it's in the center. No, literally Five seconds. all astronomical observations in the history of astronomy show the earth's in the center your model claims it's just an illusion that's a fact that's like the dumbest thing i've ever heard if you turn your head to the left and the right guess what you're going to appear in the center because you can only see the same amount of distance in every direction so it looks like you're in the center is that evidence you're actually in the center of the universe because when you look left you see 100 feet when you look right you see 100 feet are you in the center ritz it no that's just dumb it's dumb to think that because when you look in every direction and we have a certain maximum distance we can get information from light coming from different directions, that therefore we're in the center because as far as we can see in every direction, it's the same distance in every direction because that's how eyes work. It's it. Good job. Again, you need to provide evidence and discoveries of geocentrism. And you haven't. I'll give another one for heliocentrism. Um, in Clydia's ocean, in the Cassini spacecraft, before its missions end in 2017, found evidence of a global subsurface ocean beneath the icy shell of Saturn's moon, Inclidius, with plumes of water vapor erupting from its surface. 
heliocentric discovery that debunks flat earth and geocentrism a little extra time there with it this is so funny this is awesome actually now that i think about it, this is going to be recorded forever um so he said gravity proves heliocentrism i just showed that there's a dynamic equivalence using both newtonian and einsteinian mechanics all this is apparently something he's not understanding but that is what gravity is so there's newtonian and einsteinian gravity there's a dynamic equivalence of both newtonian and einsteinian and i've also explained to him that using either one of those if all these claimed missions which i don't believe in them and you're just appealing to the idea that it happened even if it did it isn't exclusive to a heliocentric model he skated past it and he just keeps reading off like wikipedia names of missions that's literally all he has and third here's a huge piece of evidence cosmic microwave background showed that there's actually an anisotropic distribution an inhomogeneous anisotropic distribution of the background energy that intersects on the earth it's it's coined the axis of evil and it's a non-local 23.4 degree tilted anisotropic distribution that intersected on the earth and to this day in 2023 there is not one single explanation of how it could possibly exist other than the data must be wrong actually there's like a dozen of them just google the wikipedia there's a number of explanations on that none of it is spectacular none of it is indicative that the world is the center of anything not at all just like how in a galaxy notice it's a disc shape there's a center of it because gravity spreads out in a disc shape just because of how things hit one another so the fact that we're on the disc in a galactic universal sense in the same way we're on the disc in the galaxy sense again not surprising at all fully explained not an issue this is why no one takes flat earth and geocentrism seriously it's a joke um i'll give another and again which it keeps confusing the the post hoc rationalization fallacy of saying ah but it can be explained by both data sets again that's just wits it doesn't understand philosophy or science so we can throw with its argument in the garbage because it's what it is it's garbage it's crank garbage because they don't understand how post hoc rationalization works i'll give another discovery given by actual science of heliocentrism kyber belt objects new horizon spacecraft having flown by pluto 2015 is now exploring other kyber belt objects shedding light on nature of these distant bodies there you go that's a discovery heliocentrism wins what is what is wits discovery Ah, uh, god no -uh. i can't i can't understand stuff <laughs> a little extra time there wits to respond yeah uh just more projection of his own intellectual ineptitude but again there's a dynamic equivalence and a kinematic equivalence according to your own model with either einstein or newtonian whichever one you pick of course now people are proposing modified newtonian dynamics because relativity doesn't work because dark matter halos has shown that dark matter cannot exist because there is actually no viscosity or resistance whenever the galaxies collide all that's over your head doesn't matter the point is that all of these missions which i don't believe in nor do i have to nor is it legitimate intellectual evidence in a debate because it can't be independently verified. If I were to pretend they were all real, objectively, they are not exclusive evidence of heliocentrism because relativity says there is a kinematic and dynamic equivalence. You wouldn't know if the earth is moving around the sun or the sun is moving from the earth as you went out into the solar system. None of those missions would be evidence of anything. He also just claimed there were responses to the cosmic microwave Five background, seconds. but there's not. There's anisotropic distribution called the axis of evil that is centered on the earth, and there is objectively no explanation from a heliocentric position let's see if he can actually respond with specificity project nihilist uh put a very prescient comment in the in the chat first law of flurf all their sources disprove their claim phenomenal absolutely true so uh, again i he just needs go he needs to google what the problem under determination is because he doesn't understand that him saying ah but it can be explained by multiple data sets is called making shit up that's, that's all it is making shit up not evidence we don't care if you can make up fancy farting leprechauns like the geocentric model to explain data anybody can make shit up there's gods that do that um it's not evidence so again real evidence um solar probe parker the parker solar probe launched by nasa in 2018 has been studying the sun's outermost atmosphere and solar wind providing crucial data about the star's behavior discovery heliocentrism you're done gravity is working just fine going towards the sun which means we're going around the sun and simply saying but i can explain it with my magic farting leprechaun geocentrism well we don't really care what are your discoveries oh my god i gotta say i'm reading the chat too and it's crazy there are people that are actually pretending you're winning <laughs> and you like you, you you don't even understand what i'm saying to you 
So yeah, there's a Newtonian Machian analysis that's published. It explains all the math and physics as well as relational mechanics. And you can apply Newtonian or Einstein and gravity to show that in fact, the earth being in the center is equally valid. But the problem is that if there's a kinematic and, and watch, he will never respond with this. He's going to list off another mission, which I've already explained that isn't exclusive to heliocentrism. He's going to ad hom me some more. That's all he has is sophistry. He's a, he's a textbook sophist. Watch, he will never answer Do you have any question. evidence? Watch this. There, if admittedly, from your own paradigm with the top levels of physics, Stephen Hawking, Albert Einstein, every top level of physics you can name, you don't understand it, right? If there's a kinematic and dynamic equivalence in validity of a geocentric and heliocentric model, but the geocentric model does not have the dark matter and dark energy problem, wouldn't that mean that the geocentric model is more viable? You'll never answer it. I could ask it for 30 <sighs> next turns in a row. It's because you don't understand the question. So the equivalence you're saying is that both the heliocentric and geocentric model can explain the data. That's the equivalence you're arguing for. The The dynamic stuff is just you making crap up. It doesn't apply to anything. You actually need a noun to say this is dynamic and equivalent. You can't just say dynamic equivalence. That's not a thing. There is no such thing as dynamic equivalence because there's no noun there to say what is equivalent. You need to say like the mass is equivalent or the, the momentum is equivalent. You know, you're noun there. You don't understand what you're talking about. Um, secondly, the geocentric model does have the dark matter and dark energy problems because those problems have nothing to do with the orientation of whether we go around the earth or sun. It's completely irrelevant. Dark matter is the fact that there's more gravity in a galaxy that isn't the solar system. That's very, very far away from. It doesn't make a difference if the if it's the geocentric or, or the heliocentric model. The mass in there is more than it should be. There's no difference. Ge heliocentric geocentric it makes no difference. Same with dark energy. No difference. So, which is bringing up problems of science that he doesn't understand. Didn't actually explain. He failed to explain how these indicate the geocentric model. He, he didn't explain this at all. He just says problems in science. <laughs> All right, a little extra time on the clock to respond there. What's it? Yeah, yeah. And the reason these are like kind of nuanced, higher level subjects that TJump doesn't understand the first thing about. So it's kind of difficult, but it's it, to really go into the depth. But when I'm talking about Fritz Wiki 1933, it, it was a dark matter. You can look it up. It was discovered that relativity was off by 99% uh, with this prediction. Geocentrism doesn't have that problem because there is an ether, right? And if you look at Michelson Morley, it, the only reason ether is thrown out is because, well, if the Earth is orbiting, there can't be an ether. Well, the Earth isn't orbiting. There's no evidence for that ever. The default position is that we're in the center. That's what all empirical evidence shows. Occam razor necessitates we say that. So to prove that it's the other, you would have to actually provide evidence. Anyway, so the ether gives a substantive quality. Therefore, you don't need dark matter. Also, the Earth being in the center, you don't need uh, an accelerative expansion. And that is called the Hubble constant, okay? Because Hubble discovered that the, supposedly the universe was expanding. It was the only way to explain why it looked like the earth was in the center of the universe, no matter where you looked. So it said it was expanding, that's Hubble constant. Then you have cosmological constant, which is the energy required to make it expand at that that's rate, which is now over four times. Okay. Okay. Which, let's, let's just try the basic. Geocentrism doesn't need the dark energy because there doesn't need to be an accelerative uh, expansion. Okay. Let's break this down for, for the, this childlike logic. The Hubble constant, what we're measuring is the change in the light frequency as it gets farther away, right? It redshifts. It gets farther away. Farther away it is, the more it redshifts, right? Uh, that's what your model claims, yeah. Right, and that and that data is the same regardless of whether we're in the geocentric or the heliocentric model. Wherever we look, it's more redshifted nope. the farther away it is, right? Nope. What? No. How? Because there are certain observations that are more local that have more redshift, like supernovas. Clearly, but that's not the question. The question is, is do the farther away we look, is it more redshift? It's saying there's a closer no. thing that's redshifted. I, I didn't care. That was, wasn't the question. The question is, is does the farther away we look, things always Typically, get more yes. redshifted the Typically, farther yeah. away? Yes. And that's the same on geocentrism and heliocentrism. Okay. It's still the same, right? Well, different explanations, right? So light attenuation causes redshift no, and so does electromagnetic care. retardation. That's, that's, that's not the point. Both no, have the right. same problem. <laughs> that's the dark energy problem. Both have the same problem. Whether you call it something different doesn't make a difference. Both have the same problem. Um, you said you explain it in a different way. That's fine. You can make right, up some seconds. farty fairy dust to make it up, but that means yours is worse than the ones that are based in real science. Dark energy makes novel predictions based on things why we explain it as something like the expanding of space-time. Your magic fairy dust from geocentrism does not. The ether 
magic fairy dust. It does not explain anything. It doesn't actually mean anything to say there's an ether there. That doesn't solve the dark matter problem. It doesn't tell us anything about the dark matter problem. You're just saying there is space goo. Space goo! That's phenomenal, but that doesn't solve the problem. You still have the problem and you still have to make something up to solve it. And the thing you're making up has no basis in reality. Therefore, yours is worse. All right. Extra time there. What's it to respond? Yeah, it's funny. What do you call it? Like magic fairy dust or whatever. Dark energy is not even defined in the top levels of physics. Oh, so to pretend God. that somehow that is significantly more superior than ether is laughable because actually I'll quote Robert Laughlin from Harvard University that specifically does this. He's a quantum vacuum physicist specifically. He says there is for sure something in the vacuum akin to an ether and whenever it's hit or excited strong enough that it then begins to actually manifest that in the material world as matter. So he says if you hit it sufficiently enough and I could do all kinds of things. Quantum is acknowledging quantum foam, all kinds of things that there is in fact an ether. We know there's an ether, but heliocentrism can't have it. So what it does, it says the quantum realm is different than everything else because you can't have an ether on the cosmological scale inside the heliocentric model. That's your own problem. But whenever he said that ether was somehow like fairy dust, it's so funny because everyone knows that dark energy is not defined and no one knows what it is. In fact, they looked at the quantum vacuum. It was off by 10 to the 120th power for the amount of energy needed in the universe. So they can't even come up with a theoretical what it could be. It doesn't make any novel predictions. No one even knows what it supposedly is. It's just needed to explain how the universe has to be seconds. expanding over four times faster than the speed of light. And electromagnetic rate retardation explains redshift on a geocentric position. You don't need expansion. So, so you think when scientists use the word dark energy, they're referring to something. Like there is a thing they are referring to. That's like this new thing that they think it is. Is that, is that what you think they're referring to when they say dark energy? Yeah, a specific type of energy is what is proposed to be. That's right. No, no. Oh my wow, God, that's so stupid. Anything. Dark energy is a label for an, a phenomenon that we don't know what is the cause of. That's it. That's a, dark energy. The dark there means we don't know what this is. It is not a new kind of energy. It is not a new kind of particle. We're not saying that. When, when scientists say there is dark energy, what they mean is there is this data that we see and we don't know what it is. So the geocentric model has the same dark energy problem. It is a thing that we see and we don't know what it is. That's it. That's all it means to say dark energy. That's all it means to say dark matter. We're not actually claiming it's this new thing that is the dark energy. It's the dark energy. Like, no, it just means unknown phenomenon, which we labeled this. That's it. So the geocentric model and the heliocentric model both have the dark energy Five problem seconds. because there is a phenomenon. We don't know what it is. And this is the label for it called dark energy. It's not an actual claim of what it's supposed to be made of. What's it? It's just a label for the unknown phenomenon. What about right. this don't you get? Before we kick it back over to Witsit, we got about 20 minutes before we go into Q&A. And uh, uh, let me know what you guys are uh, thinking. Uh, if you would prefer me to be off the mute when I'm doing the timing, because some of you guys are in the live chat saying you're muted, Mod, but I intend to be muted because I'm just a sophisticated timekeeper right now uh, to keep things fair. So uh, back to you, Witsit, and you can let me know in the live chat what you think. Okay. So you saw how condescending he was when he was saying, you don't even know what dark means. It just means we don't know what it is. <laughs> okay. What it actually means <laughs> is it does not interact with the electromagnetic spectrum. Dark means it isn't visible with light. It doesn't interact with the electromagnetic spectrum because we, we haven't been able to detect whatever it is. So we call it dark because it must not interact with the electromagnetic spectrum. It doesn't mean we don't know what it is. It means it doesn't interact with electromagnetic radiation. Okay. And when it comes to dark energy <sighs> and dark matter, and he's trying to, he's going to try to play it off like he, that's what he meant to say. Right? That's what he was saying. When it comes to dark matter and dark energy, it is a specific, either something that has material characteristics and something that has energetic characteristics, but no one knows what it is. The geocentric model does not need that, and it's 96% more viable because of that. You'll never specifically rebut it. You can't. There is no rebut. Uh, a little uh, extra time there, T-Jump. So the level of stupid is cringe here. Like, wits it literally said, it doesn't interact with the electromagnetic field, which is great, great. Does that tell us what it does do? No. So so here's the thing it doesn't do. Great. Does that tell us what it is? No. So so my claim was it's we don't know what it is. And he said, we don't know what it is, and we don't know it doesn't do this. Okay. Does, is that is that a claim we do know what it is? 
no, it's a claim. We don't know what it is. We don't know what it is. We don't know what it's made of. And so we label it dark energy. If, if it interacted with the EM spectrum, we know what it is. We have some kind of data for it. We don't have any data for it. That's the dark energy and dark matter problem. We don't know what they are. We know some things they don't do. We don't know what they do do. And so there is a data set that we don't know what it is, and we need to explain it. Guess what? Geo's interests have the same problem. They just explain it with That's magic it. space goo. There are explanations for dark matter, like, like wimps. Wimps are a potential explanation of dark matter. We don't call wimps dark matter because dark matter is a class of an unknown. Wimps are a potential explanation for the unknown. Magic ether space goo is a different potential explanation of dark matter. Both have the problem of dark matter and both have hypothetical solutions, which it just doesn't get the basic problem of what dark means in physics. All right, a little extra time, what's it? The audacity for him to act like I don't know what it means when I actually had to correct him. He, he, he said that dark means it, we don't know what it is. That's objectively not what it means in physics. It means it's undetectable due to the lack of interaction with the electromagnetic spectrum. <sighs> and then he, I, I, I get yeah. it, you're coping. I get you're coping. Undetectable, it's okay. so don't the know. Which right. synonyms? Time right now. Synonyms. You're, undetectable, here's... don't know. Synonyms. Those are so synonyms, funny, Ritz. All right. Another 45 seconds on the clock there, Ritz. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So, and he said, it's just a phenomenon. We don't know what it is. I was like, okay, well, no. Like, for example, with dark matter, it has to have material characteristics. Wimps is a claim that is baryonic matter. He doesn't even know what this stuff is. He's just like Googling like catchphrases and stuff. He doesn't know any of it, but it's a claim that it's super like a uh, small baryonic matter, right? That we can't really detect from these distances. Okay. That's the claim, but it's also been thoroughly debunked. I would also like to point out, and you can go to my channel and learn all about this, which it gets, I cover this on relatively speaking show, right? But there are many physicists coming out saying it's like basically split camps now. It's like, okay, relativity so bad, dark matter so bad. We had to do away with it. Modified Newtonian dynamics might be the better option because dark matter doesn't work because the dark matter halo show that there's, it actually doesn't match the predictions. My point again, though, is the geocentric model doesn't need dark matter or or dark energy, which means it's 96% more viable than the heliocentric model. Again, right. which is just kind of just blatantly dumb here. Dark matter isn't a thing. It's not a thing. It is an unknown phenomenon, which could be explained by a number of things. Which it explains it with magic space goo. That is dark matter. In his world, magic space goo ether is dark matter. So dark matter does exist on geocentrism. Would you disagree with it? Do you think that the ge the problem of dark matter, the, the data we see, you solve that by saying there's magic space goo, right? No, I don't have a problem with dark matter. I don't need dark matter. You dark matter is a set of data. How do you explain the set of data? Well, no, I, it's a set of data assuming relativity is true. No, it's a set of data. There's no assumption there. We, we, we look at right. galaxies. There is time. more mass than what would be expected. This is it. You explain that, right? It. You think the magic space goo holds it into place, right? You think the magic space goo holds it into place. So you have a you have an explanation of, of this. Five data. seconds. This is crazy. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. With the galaxies, I explained it, right? I explained that um, they made the observation that the galaxy should be leaving the cluster. The reason that there's not enough mass there. Well, how do you determine not enough? Well, you have to have something that's giving you a prediction that there should be this amount and there's not that amount. That something is relativity. That's why many people are proposing modified Newtonian dynamics to replace relativity to do away with the dark matter problem because assuming dark matter, even though it's undefined, it doesn't work with dark matter halos and galaxy collisions and merging. Oh, for sure. So you were wrong again. The reason dark matter comes from relativistic assumption. Now, let me say this one more thing. The earth, if the earth is in the center, when we make all our observations, we'll probably see that it looks like the earth's in the center. The heliocentric model says, oh, it's expanding. That's why it looks like that. That's why you need dark energy, but we don't. Do you not understand the concepts? A little extra time again, there, again, uh, so Witsit is dumb. Dark energy is a phenomenon that when we look further away, we see redshift. You see that in both different ways to explain it. 
is having the same problem and explain it with different hypotheses. That's all it is. Which just doesn't get this. I'm going to go back to actual discoveries that actually matter because what's it saying is stupid. Uh, Ganymede's magnetic field in June 2021, the Juno spacecraft orbiting Jupiter discovered that Ganymede, one of Jupiter's moons, generates a strong magnetic field, making it the only moon in the solar system known to do so. Discovery made by sending satellites around planets and stars using gravity, using general and special relativity to accurately send things into space and make testable predictions and confirm them, something that flurfs have never done. We need discoveries. Nothing which it has said is a discovery. Nothing nothing which it has said is anything a flurf or a geocentrist nut has ever done to make a real discovery in the world. They're kind of like idealists. They like to think in their big chairs about big fancy words they don't understand and then hypothesize about explanations and then never do any tests to confirm it. And so until they actually build like a NASA where they can do tests in the universe and confirm it with stuff, they really have nothing but armchair That's making stuff up. So basically all he's resorted to, and it's really what he started with, is a bunch of fluff. I, I hope that obviously the audience, whoever's claiming I'm getting wrecked, is just super biased. I'm, I've invited you to have intellectual specificity, but frankly, it's very obvious that you don't know about this stuff, so you have to resort in this like fluff sophistry. It's whatever. But I'm trying to point out that all observations show that the Earth's in the center. The heliocentric model of 2023 agrees with that. So that's retrograde, parallax, the planetary mo motion of the, uh, like the orbits of the planet, all of that looks like the earth is in the center, according to your own model. They claim the reason it looks like that is because the universe is accelerating and expanding, but we have the hump Hubble tension problem, the inflation problem, the, like the, uh, horizon problem, the flatness problem. We have the Five dark seconds. energy and dark matter problem in your paradigm. Now in a geocentric earth, the reason it looks like we're in the center is because we are, and we don't have any of those problems, which means objectively it's more viable. So again, I already, time. I already debunked Whitson on this. Uh, he doesn't understand post hoc rationalization. He doesn't understand under determination. The fact that you can make up farting fairy dust explanations of other data doesn't make yours better. It just means you're making shit up. I'm ready to go to Q and A. I bet you are. <laughs> I dunked All on right. you enough for the day. I'm good. Everyone uh, knows that you don't know anything about all this. Except well, I can correct you multiple closing, times. We have that closing remarks, though. Well, it, I usually do the closing remarks here. I'll, oh, I'm going to come off the mute right quick. I that's usually cool. do them after the Q&A just because uh, sometimes we get into a lot of back and forth if we missed it throughout the open discussion. Because sometimes people ask really good questions and we can, you know, get into some of the stuff that we didn't get into during the debate. So anybody watching in the live chat right now, hit that like button. Share this out in those contentious spaces that you like to have these discussions. Uh, me and Ozian are going to be doing an after show uh, over on Matters Now, so you can uh, hang out over there. These guys are welcome to join us as well we're going to run into our q a but i'm also going to do a little uh a little extra housekeeping here and remind you once again that our tickets for debate con 4 are linked in the description so if you're seeing double it's because what's it's going to be there and he's going to be debating leo uh phileas uh who else you're going to be debating a couple times too aren't you what's that i don't know i don't think so no okay i i thought i'd seen your face a few times maybe it's we, just we, because you're a popular guy there was another one tentatively but you know people people get scared to, to defend atheism nowadays so oh no someone got scared well that's no fun well either way uh if you're seeing double that's because what's it down here he's going to be debating creationism versus atheism against leo Phileas. you're not going to want to miss it so get your tickets in the description below if you're going to be in the dallas area and you can make it uh and let us know in the live chat if, uh, where you're at right now we're going to be hanging out in dallas of course uh, for the convention it is all going to be streamed live for free on youtube as well i know shooting ourselves in the foot a little bit by just offering it to you for free but uh, that's how we roll here at Modern Day Debate. If you can't help us out by being there for the live event, you can't purchase tickets. Uh, you see this little crowd fund I'm moving around over here. Uh, that's that's a little indicator of uh, another thing we have going on where you can donate to our crowd fund and get access to uh, perks such as a signed picture of your favorite debater. So without further ado, let's go into the Q&A and see if we can stir the pot of this discussion, everybody. All right. Run Boston Bear for four ninety nine says, which it brings the truth. If you reject it, the programmer is strong with you. We don't live on a spinning water ball. I recommend investigating. Thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, the truth is most people, just, it's easier to be like, ha ha, you're dumb. Ha ha, you think you're smarter than scientists. And, you know, it's, 
maybe the truth's not for them. I mean, you know, I encourage you to not worry about what other people think. And consensus has consistently been wrong about pretty much everything, even within quote unquote, currently accepted science. So just research things yourself thoroughly because attacking other people and belittling them and pretending that you know things that you don't is not really going to do anything. Even if you convince other people, like you should be worried about truth for yourself. It's good for your soul. Any thoughts over there, Tom? Uh, Google the properties of quack science. If you just Google like the, the stages of quack science, um, you will take like four or five sentences out of, out of what Wits just said, or I think half of them. Okay. Well, let's carry on there, gents. Uh, Ozian Talk says, Tom will always have enough hair for a comb over. Um, I, I don't usually read com uh, comments about someone's physical appearance, but uh, I, I think we're all over 30 and we all have got a good hairline going on. Like, Rocking it, fellas. Rocking it. All right. Run Boston Bear for $4.99. News flash. In Austin's opener, he wasn't just making stuff. Check everything he said, and it'll hold water. I think they meant just making stuff up. Uh, check everything he said, and it'll hold water. It may also set you free from deception. So you got a fan with Run Boston Bear? Thoughts uh, on Run Boston Bear's input there? What's it? Yeah, shout out to Run Boston, bro. I just kicked it with him at Flatoberfest in Vegas. He's a super cool dude. That's my homie. He's a legend. Um, yeah, I, 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 I will say, right, this is a, a conversation that requires some time. So for me to try to unpack it in 10 minutes or with someone that's not like really trying to be honest about the specific information in the heart of it, I mean, it's, it's more than that. But uh, do look up the stuff, look up the papers, look up the books, read the math, read the physics. Um, and I have a show called In the Field where I have astronomers, astrophysicists, different people with credentials on, and you can maybe just glean from those conversations two or three hours. In fact, I'll take this opportunity to say I have one on the first. We're going to talk about the ether vortex, and this is a, a legend that's going to be on there. So yeah, just just you know, invest the time required because all good knowledge requires some time. Any thought on that, Tom? Uh, ether vortex or uh, conversations uh, with uh, those individuals? People have gone through the science with Witsit many times, like uh, cats, and they've shown him that he knows absolutely nothing and that all of his sources debunk himself, uh, but it's not really worth the time. All right. Well, let's carry on from there then. Uh, uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out in the live chat. And uh, if you are hanging out in the live chat and you're enjoying what you're hearing from either of our speakers, they will be linked in the description. Uh, so if they're not linked now, they will be linked post uh, the debate also in our podcast because all of these debates get uh, uploaded to a podcast form within 24 hours. Uh, so if you're watching right now and you're in the live chat, hit the like button. I see we're sitting around uh, 250 Hey, Ryan, likes. look, is there any way we can work something out where I can go downstairs and like fill my glass and piss real fast and then be back <laughs> like if he if there are questions for him like it'll you, be like just a couple minutes Austin, yeah just go you, yeah go you hit me in a soft spot you rhymed okay like oh, i'm sorry yeah, I, do got, it. I got to do it fly you fool fly it's all good <laughs> <laughs> do the with gandalf for you all right see you in a few all right so uh let's see what we got here uh for t jump uh yeah and you know why they couldn't fly on the eagles because the eagles would have wanted the ring as well there you go. All right. So that's your Lord of the Rings input. This one from Run Boston Bear, and I might take one out of Witsit's uh, chapter here uh, and give you the floor for a second here. T-Jump. All the discoveries you keep listing are biased in philosophy that infinite space is real. It's not. No one has played golf on the moon. Yes, they have, but none of the discoveries I listed are contingent on infinite space. They don't care whether space is infinite or not. All they need to do is have it's contingent on the ability to launch shuttles and things across the solar system, like across the sun through gravitational trajectories in order to land where they want them to land. That's all you need for these discoveries. You don't need any infinite space stuff. All right. Ryan, do some housekeeping from your hooligan. Yeah, yeah, I, did, I, I thought I did the housekeeping. I'll remind everybody once again. Uh, tickets are linked in the description. Uh, we're going to be in Dallas, Texas. Uh, so let us know in the live chat where you're hanging out. I'm in Nova Scotia right now. We heard from both of our speakers. You can go back in the video. Uh, I, I pitched it at the very beginning. So uh, we know where everybody's at, um, but I can't remember where everybody's at. So uh, don't count on me. Uh, let's carry on with the q and I'm just going to search for another one here. 
for you. LJ, hey, you made it. This is the right time for you. You're always commenting on the space debates, always making space comments. Uh, I'm really glad to see that you're here, and uh, this this will hopefully keep us uh, in the zone. He said, brainwashed T-jump. Well, that seems real on the money, right? Like, hmm, good, good stuff there, LJ. If the moon was physical and asteroids were real, we'd have videos from Earth of asteroids hitting the moon by now. Why don't we have one? I think, actually, what? I might read that just one more time, just because Wits it's here. Uh, so first to you, T-Jump, uh, and then I'm going to take my opportunity. He says, if the moon was physical and asteroids were real, we'd have videos from Earth of asteroids hitting the moon by now. Why don't we have one? Uh, because the face of the moon that's facing the Earth is in between us, and so if there is an asteroid that was going to try to hit the side of the moon that was we're looking at, it would have to pass the Earth to do so, and the Earth is a bigger gravitational force, and so it would hit the Earth, which means asteroids are more likely to hit the back of the moon or the side, not the part of the moon that's facing us. It makes no sense. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm... More likely doesn't mean it should never happen, but anyway, we have lunar waves, and uh, they have no answer for lunar waves, and, and they've been captured with some of the the nicest telescopes that exist. Um, they claim that it must be a jet that flew by. Well, that's crazy because we've been recording the sky for the last five hours. There are no jets, no planes. There are lunar waves, and actually, we've seen that there are waves in the entire sky now in space, quote unquote. But uh, yeah, you know, I mean, the moon is not what you think it is. And if you really think some Masons pulled their Masonic flag out on the moon in 69 and read a Bible verse and haven't been back in 50 years, then this conversation may not be for you. Like lunar waves, do you think there are waves on the moon's surface or something? No, no, like we've actually observed and recorded the fact that there are waves that go across the moon. So yeah. you think that you think there's waves on the moon's surface? Okay. I don't, I didn't even say the word surface. Why would I say such a word? Lunar waves are a real thing. Have you ever researched them? They are not a real thing. There, there are no waves. But you've the, never researched lunar them, lunar but surface. you know they're not a real thing. I, That's crazy. Like just Google lunar waves. Like literally nothing comes up. It's not a thing. Yeah. Google. Yeah, because Google doesn't hide stuff. Google's your best friend. Trust me. T. John knows. He's seven boosters well, deep. I can, I can find in, all the pro, other conspiracy theories. Look, we get it, bro. Right. We get it. We get it. You're waiting wait, for wait, Biden. There, there be are careful no what we say waves. on the air just because we don't okay. want to get this demonetized funds. All right, Crow. talk about those things. Crow777. So Crow with two R C R R O W. Triple seven lunar waves. He's got them documented many times. Is that a published journal? I'm going to go with no. Good one. Pretty good burn, actually. Yes. Funny is, I could show you some public journals that would make you regret your decisions the last three years. You wouldn't want to read those. You would just, what? as soon as I give you the published paper, just like earlier when I showed, no, that's a real published peer reviewed paper, objectively. Then he says, Oh, let me Google how he's a quack. So they immediately shift the goalpost to, Oh, well, let me discredit that person with the genetic fallacy. So all it is, is sophistry. It's always an attempt to like dismiss the info because if they actually have to talk about the information and the evidence, they stand no chance. They're uninformed. So it's a tactic. And, and I think that real truth seekers will clearly see that that's the case. And if not, I don't care. Well, that's, that's what flat flurfs usually do. They ignore the actual data that's being presented and say, ah, you're just, you're just not looking or not paying attention. Blah, blah, blah. No, no, that's all they really say. And then mischaracterize the opponent's position. Cause that's all they can do. Like I actually give discoveries and they do nothing but post hoc rationalization and he says oh but you haven't presented any real do, 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 do. And it's just right. a flurf tactic Dibble. let's yeah. move on from there we're Projection. not uh, <laughs> all right so um i i do want to ask right quick uh, we got a couple spicy ones here in the live chat all right you fellows are good for it are you okay all right news flash austin's opener is utter nonsense he's just getting stuff wrong please check everything he said it will set you free from cults and con men uh, it's from Kango 44. Thoughts? What's it? Yeah, like all that T Jump said the whole time, all that the chat said the whole time, and all the super chats will say is that I'm wrong. They'll never offer specificity, but you can go research it, right? I just now actually quoted 
in context, it's not just misquoted, quote mind, in context, a person that was personally friends with Einstein that, that covered relativity and taught it at university for 20 years, one of the most well-known and established relativity experts ever explaining what I was claiming, right? I've given you all the math, all the physics, it all checks out. So if you actually do go verify what I'm saying, that there's a kinematic and dynamic equivalence, you will see that it wasn't nonsense. But I will say, last thing, it is a very effective tactic. And I will also concede, T-Jump is really good at it. He's really good at it. One of the better ones. They even got me flustered at the beginning, right? Which, uh, you know, I'm sorry for. He's really good at it. If you just baselessly claim victory in a convincing manner, void of substantive specificity, it can lure in those not in the know. But you can look at the PowerPoint, look at the specific claims. I know I had to go fast and go fact check everything I said and go look at in the field on my channel. You'll see well, I'm talking to PhD astronomers that disagree with me about it. And they're agreeing with what I said in my PowerPoint, which goes to show you that that super chat is just a lie. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to give uh, T-Jump a, a chance to respond, but uh, that is why I moved us into those rounds as well, because I did want to make sure that everybody felt like they were getting an equal chance to uh, speak. And I think things went pretty smoothly uh, after that point. So I hope everybody felt like that was fair on my end. Uh, but uh, T-Jump, uh, he's uh, kind of invoked your character a bit there. So a chance to uh, defend yourself there against uh, what he said, and uh, we'll bounce it back. Well, I don't need to defend myself. Actual science and actual philosophy work just fine. And so since he doesn't know what a post hoc rationalization is or what underdetermination is, I debunked all of his arguments like way, way earlier on in the debate. And there was nothing left just to give actual data and then show how the actual data compares to flurf data. And then, well, the actual data wins. And then that's, that's all there is to it. All right. Uh, that's why he we'll avoided the data like the plague, bro. I crushed your, you don't have any data. You have, they can't explain it. It's all post hoc rationalization. Good job. I already developed that right. one, bro. Coming in from LJ. You Once you realize seawater doesn't curve, you wake up from the globe religion. T dump. At what size? Oh, said T dump. My goodness. I'm sorry. T jump. <laughs> that, that is what he put, though. Sorry. I was just reading it. I did warn you there was a few spicy ones in here, and now I'm just reading them uh, verbatim. At what size do you all observe flat bodies of water starting to curve? It's been answered, asked and answered many times by people who've actually researched this. You can just go ask cats. He'll, he'll, do, he'll demonstrate it for you. It's easy. All right. Uh, LJ, once again, coming in, uh, you're in the right space for this. 199, why do we have zero non-CGI videos of space in 2023? We do have non-CGI videos of space. What are you talking about? We love literal pictures of actual space from space. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Last few oh. questions have been muted, says uh, Ozian. Yeah, sorry about that, everybody. Uh, I might have hit that when I uh, ran off to use the old you-know-what. Uh, so the first one was uh, from Congo. You can check it out in the live chat, but we were just mm. answering LJ's. Once you realize seawater doesn't curve, you wake up from global religion. Uh, T-Jump, at what size do you observe flat bodies of water start to curve? And then the next one was from LJ. Why do we have zero non-CGI videos of space in 2023? Uh, so I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't know if you'd hear my toilet flushing. Come on now, guys. I got to be classy here. All right, over you, what's it? As I mentioned that, right? T Jump said that we do have them, and he said, "I promise I'm right." Scientists agree with me, and Witz just doesn't understand. There, we'll save some time. Um, I I will say, what I've discovered is there. A lot of people say, "Oh, Austin's scared to debate flat Earth now," so he talks about geocentrism. No, what I've discovered is the people that just spew these remedial ad homs and stuff like that about flat earth, they're also not willing to be intellectually honest about geocentrism. So like why even discuss something as like, like worldview altering as flat earth? Let's start with the fact that you can't prove the earth is in motion and your own model, your own physics relativity says that you cannot. And if someone can't be honest and be like, well, yeah, according to relativity, the earth could be in the center of the universe. If they can't be honest about that, then why would I discuss something else with them? So uh, just to clarify, and that's why I was trying to explain to him, even if you believe in space missions and you believe in all this other stuff, according to your own models, physics or claimed physics, anomalous physics, it could be geocentric. And I encourage you to open your mind and think about that, bro. 
think about it and then go read Stephen Hawking's stubbornly persistent illusion who says, oh, well, we choose the idea that we're not in the center based on humility and philosophical preference. And that's not science. Right. And so I just I just want people to know the truth and make their own decision. Um, but anyway, there you go. Could be magical there. farting fairies, therefore magical farting fairies. Good job. I love it. It's the greatest argument like dark ever. matter and dark energy. And the big All thing. Right. And well, let's carry on there, fellas. Congo 44 once again. And uh, I'm going to keep a good eye on that uh, mute button, everybody. Uh, you know, I, I haven't done that in a hot minute. It must be because T jumps back and uh, he's just he's pulling me back in the old days. I think it's been seven months since T jump has been here. Uh, you know, we're, we're glad to see you back on the forum and uh, hopefully we'll see you back for lots of more juicy discussions. Congo 44 for five dollars says question for Witsit. Have you done T Jump's moon radar experiment yet? As a truth seeker, I would think you would want to do it as soon as possible. Uh, no, I haven't done it because it, it wouldn't mean anything to me. Because if the if the radar claims of the moon are true, which if you actually I don't know anything about T Jump's experiment, but um, I would like to see them shot at the moon and away from the moon. But if the moon is plasma, for example, it could be many things. Then it, the ionization of the plasma would still reflect the radio wave, depending on the megahertz of the fre the frequency. Meaning, if the radio frequency is equal to or lower than the ionization or the frequency of the moon, then it would in fact reflect it back which is, of course, the globe model's claim to try to save it away with the ionosphere from radio waves that go too far, right? And this is a well-known fact in physics in the lab that if you have like ionization, so plasma is just ionized gas, and you shoot radio waves at it, if the frequency of the radio wave is equal to or lower than the frequency of the ionized gas, it will reflect it back. Right. And then the duration of signal is how they claim to determine the distance. But if their assumption of the medium is wrong, which it is, and top level of physics is now saying dark matter superfluid and maybe more dense in space than we thought, blah, blah, blah. If the medium is different, the duration of signal is different. Thus, your distance interpolation is different. Now, I know some of these concepts are new to Ten people, seconds. but just just digest what I said and research it. It's certainly not word salad. Any thoughts, D John, before you Word move on? salad, absolutely. Word salad. The experiment's real simple. If you bounce radio waves off of the moon and they bounce back to you, then the moon's round and you can tell the distance from the moon from wherever you sent the radio waves. And if the distance is approximately the same from anywhere where you send it from the moon, then guess what? The moon's a globe. Because if it was flat, you'd get vastly different distances when you bounce radio waves off of the moon and get them to come back. It's a very simple experiment, which is just spews word salad of things he doesn't understand to try to cover up the fact that he doesn't actually have an answer for any of the actual yeah. simple science he avoided everything i said because i literally just addressed it. it except you didn't address I, that I did. the ionization of gas is, oh my God. the frequency will reflect the signal back if it's equal to or less than uh, avoided it and which, you avoided that doesn't the address the problem with it you What's avoided it? that the assumption of the medium is required to determine the distance with the duration of the signal. And that's because I have a very curated answer that you cannot rebut and are ill-equipped to rebut. So Which okay. it, what you I'm said was so I, inanely I, stupid because you don't understand the actual problem. The reason you bounce okay. radio waves off the moon is to measure the distance. And so you bounce them from different places. So none oh, of that shit you oh said matters God. because it, all of that affects the radio waves in every direction the same. And so you still get to be able to triangulate the distance to the moon is equivalent from each different point you measure it, which means guess what? World not flat, bro. No, it doesn't mean that it because does. the moon has a position. And if the ionization frequency is equal to or less, if the signal sent is equal to or less, then it will reflect back to you. And then if you are making an inaccurate assumption of the medium, which you clearly are, if you even research oh that, which you have so dumb. So again, it, again, that's that's all solved. That's all solved. That. That's all solved. That. No, 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 that's that's all solved by if you send the same grand, radio wave. You couldn't rebut it. I, just I will roll, I'll roll it right uh, now. It's very simple. Send the okay. same frequency from multiple different locations. It'll affect whatever the gibberish nonsense word salad you said. The same in both locations. And guess what? If you get the same numbers, world not flat, bro. So all of the stuff you said is invalidated by the method of the experiment I already proposed. You just don't understand it because you don't understand basic science. And First of all, the test obviously hasn't actually been done. Secondly, it even literally if has it been had done. been 
even if it had no yes it hasn't yes it it's absolutely called, has it's not. called ham radio experiments these literally have been done many many They're times called ham every radio year experiments yes. so what are they called moon to earth moon to moon to something it, it, something it, um you're called like yeah like moon bounce so yeah but look here's the deal it doesn't right. prove the distance because yeah, you assume the medium Okay, let me explain it to the room. 30 seconds. The way that they are claiming that you determine the distance to the moon with radio waves is you send a signal and it bounces back. They say, okay, it takes 2.2 seconds. So since we know space is a vacuum, okay, we can know how fast that radio waves propagate in a vacuum. Therefore, if we take the 2.2 seconds, use the assumption of a vacuum, we can tell you how far it's traveled through that vacuum because we know the rate of propagation of radio waves through the vacuum. If the medium is something else, for example, more dense, then it would be closer and your assumption would be incorrect, as well as it doesn't even have to be solid matter to bounce the radio waves back because just like the globe claims with the ionosphere, if the ionization of the gas- Again, none of that matters with it. With it, I already it debunked it all back. of that nonsense that's irrelevant to the experiment. The experiment doesn't care what the moon is made of. The experiment doesn't matter what how far the moon away is. What matters is, is, is the distance to the moon the same or different from each point you test the experiment? If the moon is here and you measure it from here, it's going to be closer than if it's from here and you measure it. So if the distance is vastly different, world flat. If distance the same from everywhere, world round. It doesn't matter what it's made of. It doesn't matter how far away it is. None of that gibberish word salad you said was relevant to the experiment was that you just don't understand basic science. And of course, it wouldn't even be the same on a globe. That goes to show be, you. There'd be a slight difference back. on a globe. Oh, on a flat Earth, there'd be okay. a big difference. So. Wait, why? How, how close does flat Earth claim that the moon is? Was like six thousand miles or something? I forget. No one feet. claims that. You just say you have to straw man. No, you no. There's lots of people who've claimed that. Are you, you kidding me? I've debunked lots of crazy flat earthers. This, you projected earlier, so you have to mischaracterize your position, but that's all you can do. What is okay. sophistry and mis? I, I just debunked your worldview. I just, just move on. Explain. You just have no chance. Why haven't you done the experiment yet? Why haven't you done the experiment? What's it? We we already explained it isn't exclusive evidence, and you should go back and watch the debate. Take notes and research the terms. I just debunked your salad. You're done. Okay, next one is coming in, guys, from uh, Congo 44. Uh, you know, you got to like the spirit of these two fellows uh, here having this discussion. So hit that like button if you haven't already. Uh, we're having a good <laughs> time uh, having this uh, discussion back and forth. Next one's coming in for you, uh, T-Jump. It says, Witsit, do you understand neutrino detectors completely debunk you? Maybe T-Jump could explain it to you. So we'll put it over to you, T-Jump. Do you know what neutrino detectors He's are? He's probably referring to the experiment where you can send neutrinos through the planet and uh, like receive it on the other end. And so you know that the world is round because um, if you're like shooting a gun down and, and someone detects it on the bottom, then they must necessarily be below you. Uh, as opposed to if the world's flat, it wouldn't work. Probably what they're referring to. Okay, so what he's clearly talking about is they claim to be receiving neutrinos from the sun underneath. But if you actually look at it, what they do is they interpolate the data through a model. They assume the position of the sun and actually run it through a graph that organizes the colors based on the assumed distribution of neutrinos, which, of course, they claim can potentially go faster than the speed of light and pass through all matter. And they don't know exactly what it is. And they can't even interpret exactly how the machine itself is receiving it because they don't know exactly what neutrinos are. And top level physicists will tell you all of that. But I would like to point out, all the super chats, T jumped the entire debate. All he could bring up is flat earth, flat earth, flat earth, flurf, 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 because they could never debate geocentrism. I would dunk on all of them 500 V1. They don't even know what the kinematic dynamic equivalence is. They don't know what the neotyconic system is. They don't know what the Newtonian analysis is. They don't know anything. They blindly believe the consensus, okay? And that's why all these super chats are about flat earth. All that T-Jump is talk about is flat earth because they can't defend that the earth is a tilted, wobbling, spinning ball revolving around the sun in space. They can't defend heliocentrism because their own model says, oh, it could be in the center. We have no idea. So I just want the audience to keep an eye on that. Everything they talk about is flat earth, flat earth, so that they can discredit me. Right? They can poison the well and discredit me because they can say flat earth is so stupid. Let's avoid the fact that Austin absolutely intellectually eviscerated T-Jump when it comes to geocentrism and he avoided it with all, all specificity the entire time. Right? So just, it'd be cool if you guys can talk about the subject. 
But uh, you can't. I don't think you understand you how words work, anything Quincy, about it. Because when I say flat earth, I'm collectively also referring to geocentrism as both equally stupid. So anytime I refer to flat earth, it also covers the topic of geocentrism. So everything I said debunked all of your arguments and all of the flat earth arguments in addition to those. So how do neutrino detectors debunk geocentrism? Uh, well, they, they don't. That wasn't my argument. Oh, how does argument. the moon bounce debunk geocentrism? That was from a question, not during the debate. Okay, so, so nothing you've said. Which, 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 stop being stupid for a second. The things <laughs> I said during the debate were debunking your geocentric nonsense <laughs> and name your one, flat nonsense. Name the one things, you said that. Shush, 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 shush. The things in the Q&A, which also address flat earth questions because you have stupid flat earth beliefs in addition to that, are not necessarily related to the debate topic, which was during the debate. So during the debate, I debunked all of your dumb geocentric nonsense and your flat earth nonsense with all of my arguments. And then we addressed some other oh. stuff from the Q&A as well, but you don't understand how words work. So you have a problem intellectually with how those relate. There's That's a proportionate there, there's a proportionate relationship between his uncomfortable uncomfortability and ineptitude and insecurity and insults. So like I don't understand how words work, I'm stupid, I'm dumb, all this stuff. That's it's proportionate relationship to how ignorant he is as he projects. Because if I went to ask him, name one thing specifically you said that debunked geocentrism, he's got nothing. He just started listing off missions. All and of he those missions. Every, yes. he, and, and, all and, missions. I don't mean to cut you off here, just to kind of focus in on what we're doing right now with the q and A. I I know that he's uh, implicated you a bit there, and I think he kind of... Uh, well, just, just to give like a five-second right response... Just, well, this, I, these I, models make let, predictions yeah. which are successful. There you go. That debunks geocentrism. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll let you make that point. That's fine. Uh, but I do want to ask what's at the question here from the super chatter. And sorry, there was a fly that was bugging me. He was trying to Mike Pence me there for a second, and I wasn't going to let it happen. jump on fire. Like, bro, if you think T-Jump is, like, winning this debate, like, I hope that you stay in your state of mind because it's just pathetic. So I do want to uh, ask the question from Congo here, and then we're going to move on. Uh, so Witsit, do you know what the uh, – so do you understand neutrino detectors completely debunked you? Uh, I'll give you 10 to 15 seconds to kind of wrap up this question here, and then we'll yeah, move I on did. I Wade. explained it. I explained how they don't. I explained that neutrinos are a phenomenon that no one can fully explain. They claim it goes through all material. It may go faster than the speed of light. We don't even know what they are. All top-level physicists will tell you that. And whenever globe earthers bring it up, which is a diversion away from tonight's subject because they can't defend heliocentrism like i explained they claim that it's because we see the sun through the earth but actually if you go research the papers and read them which i have they actually run the neutrino observations and data through a certain algorithm and then they start to throw out all the stuff away from where they assume the sun is through the earth and then they create a graph and a visual illustration from that that's what actually happens and no one will actually address that all right, this next one coming in again for you, Witsit, from Wade Eberly. Uh, why do the apparent epicycles of epicycles, epicycles of the planet's motions fit so neatly into ellipses uh, when we center our perspective on the sun? Yeah. That so, looks like a bunch of typos to me. I'm sorry. But yeah, 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 yeah. Well, actually, this is just a fact that whenever heliocentrism was first proposed, because what had happened was they took Tycho Brahe's data, observations, and model, which was a geocentrist, right? They took his data and then tried to make it a heliocentric model with Copernicus. They had to add significantly more epicycles to the heliocentric model to make it work. So it's funny. So both systems have epicycles, and that's because if you look at the torus field, there are naturally epicycles within that elongated sphere that, that is the torus field, right? But whenever heliocentrism tried to take Tycho Brahe's data and make it a heliocentric model, it had to add significantly more epicycles to make the math work. So it's actually significantly more complicated and works way less efficiently than a geocentric central position. But, you know, who cares about facts, I guess, you know. All right. Let's try to get through this next one a little uh, bit quicker, I guess, because, uh, well, I guess, I mean, we still got like a 30 minutes before we'll get to that two hour mark that I kind of set that we'll try to get you guys out of here. Um, but I'm just trying to renege on saying this name. It's Swampy Pubes. What a fantastic name you have. Just like go wash up or something and change your YouTube name. Anyways, uh, Winston, I disagree with you uh, just about every single belief you hold. But I have to admit, your new setup is nice, dude. Ah, uh, thank you, brother. What are you rocking over there? What's going on? I like the I like the chairs in the background there. You see those guys? Yeah. 
I like that. I haven't actually even like finished setting anything up, but that. thank you. Got your nose. All right. Now I'm going to get out of there. All right. So, um, <laughs> uh, with, uh, so next one, LJ brainwash TJ. If the moon was physical and asteroids were real, we'd have videos from earth of asteroids hitting the moon by now. Why don't, Oh yes. That one yep. while he was out. Yes. Sorry. Uh, Ozean talks, uh, what journal did Popov uh, publish in peer review means that other scientists validated his results and not just published in a random paper. I don't see it. It's for you. What's it? Yeah, so I don't I don't know what it is because for some reason my my Acrobat is not loading. But you can look up Newtonian mocking analysis of the Neo Tychonian model of planetary motion. Um, it's the European Journal of Physics. I wonder if that's good enough. Is the European Journal of Physics good enough? I wonder. No, now that it's the European Journal of Physics, okay, and he's well accredited. Now we have to try to discredit this guy because it is peer reviewed with a very renowned journal of physics. So that's called shifting the globos and a genetic files. All right. If you see me smiling, I was just reading some of the live chats there. They're kind of fun. All right. So let's carry on. Um, any thoughts on your side there, T jump while I scroll up here or carry on? Yeah, it was peer reviewed and debunked. So he's right that it was published and peer reviewed and then debunked. So that was kind of, I might, I, maybe I should have clarified that. It had to be peer reviewed and then accepted, like supported, confirmed. Like, yes, you can publish papers and journals and get them rejected. Sure. Oh, okay. Congrats. Oh, let me actually, let me point this out because let's be real. He has, he's never read the paper. doesn't know anything about it. He claimed it was fake. Now he knows all about it. He doesn't know anything about it, but it wasn't debunked. Everyone concedes the paper's accurate. He didn't even propose that no. the earth is Stop interrupting me. No, I literally gave propose, you an example of rejecting all of He didn't even that. propose that the Earth was geocentric. He just said, look at the Newtonian, Neotychonian analysis mathematically and physically, and you will see there is an equivalence of inertial forces. And everyone conceded that that is, in fact, true. That's why it got published in the European Journal of Physics. No, that's not uh, how publication works. Um, you never you, read it. Shush, shush, right, shush, let's, shush, let's, shush, shush. let's let TJ so, respond there. What's it? We've let's got, educate uh, with it on basic publications. There are lots of publications. Right. The fact that it was published does not mean everyone agrees, which it doesn't understand science number 3037. Oh, and oh, when man. I actually gave the Cornell University response to this paper that shows actually debunked and wrong, uh, I think apparently he just ignored that. Maybe he didn't hear it. I'll, I'll give it again. In self-contradiction, Mackey and Geocentrism entails absolute space by Herbert Hartman. This debunks everything in that paper, which is why it is rejected. Um, the fact that you got it published, good job, good job, Florf. Um, but it's rejected by the consensus. And, and I forgot, I should have added this in. If you get peer reviewed published papers, they have to actually be accepted by the consensus, not rejected by the consensus. That's important. You can publish papers in journals all the time. There's an entire journal about parapsychology. Good job. That doesn't mean people agree with it, it's just junk science. Dude, it's so funny. You've never read it. I've read it. It doesn't actually invoke absolute space. So you just got absolutely destroyed by any true intellectual that goes and reads the paper. I don't think it you understand how words work. Stop interrupting me. It specifically denounces absolute space and says that that was the, the lethal assumption of Newton to assume that there was absolute space, which, of course, Einstein said that there was not. And, in fact, it says that there is angular momentum of the oh, entire yeah. cosmos going around the Earth. How are you so bad at this? See, it's like I'm just talking over your head. Let's be yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the paper specifically says his claim that it doesn't entail absolute space is debunked by his own paper because it's a self-contradiction, like literally the first words, in self-contradiction. This paper, which claims that there is no absolute space, actually entails absolute space. Please learn words. It does please, not, though. Please. Academic peer-reviewed paper, Cornell University, oh, right. actually sir, actually oh. accepted by the consensus. Debunked. Really? Did you Debunked. did you poll the consensus? Yes. yes or did I just did. confirm your bias? Yes, I did. I polled the consensus. Well, I've talked to 10 physicists personally that admit that the no, listen, that admit that the math and the physics are completely viable and accurate. But you, you know all the consensus, and you've never even read the paper. 
You're laughably a sophist, dude. We did did you forget the problem of determination? Did you forget the problem of determination? You can make you up party theories to explain everything. It doesn't make a difference. It didn't do that. It used a Newtonian mechanics. Oh, I don't think All you right. understand. We're, we're moving on, fellas, to the next super chat. Hate stares coming in. Uh, people act like this dude is winning. It's crazy. This, uh, th 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 this is not Cope. so bad. He says, good job, Ryan. Keep All up the insults. good work. What are you talking about? I have a I have a super chat, guys. Look, somebody's complimenting me. You know, I like that. That's fine. Uh, ask debaters. Do you know the law of flat earthers? <laughs> uh, Their own citations contradict them. And you know, it's funny is, the first they law. don't though. They, they do. don't though. They do. They literally don't though. They literally do though. So wait, 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 wait. Hey, watch this. I'm gonna expose you because I've been pretty nice to you. Frankly, you have no idea. Hey, T jump. According to relativity. Could the Earth be in the center of the universe kinematically and dynamically? Yes or no? Kinematically and dynamically are not actual things in relativity. Relativity is indifferent to the position of the planet. It doesn't actually say anything about the position of the planet. This dude just said that kinematically and dynamically aren't actual things in relativity. Kinematics is about the geometric path and dynamic is about the force that causes the path. If you knew the first thing about astronomy and astrophysics and relativity, you would know that there's a concession of equal justification of coordinate systems due to a kinematic equivalence. And that if you actually examine the mathematics and the physics of relativity, there's a dynamic equivalence, meaning the force that relativity invokes, the force that isn't a force that acts like a force, actually can be equally justified on a central position, which is why Einstein himself said everything occurs on the earth as if the earth's at rest. And it's just equally valid to say that the sun moves around the earth or the earth moves around the sun. So That's I already debunked Einstein's you and he's quote. just spewing more word salad. Like again, kinematic is not a thing. Kinematic is a relation between two other things. You need nouns there. You can't just say kinematic is not a thing. Dynamic, again, not a thing. You need nouns there. Dynamic relation between two <laughs> things. He doesn't understand physics and he doesn't understand relativity. And I answered his question, which he said I wouldn't answer because he doesn't understand basic science. The, the oh, kinematic right. and dynamic equivalence within the heliocentric and geocentric model according to relativity. You don't even understand. It's obviously based on the relationship of different bodies. That's what the heliocentric and geocentric model is. It's a dynamic and kinematic equivalence. His rebuttal was those are not things. Okay, perfect. I told you I would expose you. You didn't. All Good right. job. You failed. I objectively so, so you need, just you say there's a, a dynamic equivalence between this you need a noun there there needs to be a noun if there's no noun it's just an adverb yeah. or an adjective it doesn't mean anything you can't just say adjective adjective that is adjective so hard. adjective you, you need a noun before right. the adjective Cope we're gonna hard, move on bro. to the next super chat there fellas uh keep them coming in there's lots of super chats i'm gonna set a 45 minute timer i think here uh once again well i'm, I'm going usually... in like 10 minutes all right so that's a good idea then is then i'll set a timer right, here so we can... you better get out of here bro um, we're going to skip some of these ad hominy ones then guys, and just move into ones that are, um, substantive and I'm going to try to shush while I look for them. Um, run Boston bear T jump. All the discoveries you keep listing are biased and philosophy that infinite space is real. It's not, one. no one has played golf on the moon. You already read that one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dude, well, there's so one's... many people coping in the chat, bro. That's crazy. Why are you stealing my insult? I said you're coping. You can't steal my insult. Oh, Come on, be original. About, I'm, be original. I'm talking about how like people are pretending that you even got close to rebutting anything I've said this whole time. All right. People can understand words from... better than Witsit. Congratulations. Let's stay away from that. How many stuff we're going to focus here, guys? It's, I've had LJ. more than that. Come on. How Man. did T-Jump isolate gravity from electrostatics? 45 seconds. T-Jump. What's what? What's the relevance to the question? I don't understand the question. All right. Uh, maybe you can give us a little insight. I'm going to pause the clock. Uh, what does LJ mean when they say, how did T-Jump isolate gravity from electrostatics? Okay. He's saying electrostatics is 10 to the 36 power stronger than gravity is even claimed to be. And it's all material is intrinsically electrostatic because all molecular and intermolecular attractive forces are electrostatic in nature. So if you're going to claim there's an additional force there that does the same thing as it, how can you isolate gravity from electrostatics if it's ever present? That's his question. Oh, so yeah, that's easy. Gravity is 40 orders of magnitude weaker than the electromagnetic force. And so if it was electrostatic, everything would be crushed together very quickly. So we can definitively show that it's a different force with absolute certainty. And if you don't know that, you're dumb. Dumb as rocks. All right. Yeah, nice you didn't answer. <laughs> literally just did. <laughs> if All someone right. thinks you did, okay. 
Next one coming in. Donate to my cash app so I can make. What is your name? It's too long. I can't. Read I need five hours of this guy because apparently people think he's really doing something. Can all we right. set up a five-hour debate, T Jump? We'll put some money on the line. Like, like just automatically you get paid five hours, but it has to be like time. If I get up. paid, yeah, paid absolutely. All right, cool, cool. Let's, let's just play. It. Let's just play poker on the air, guys. Come on. I think I can get awesome fun. clips, bro. You, you're right. gonna go viral, bro. If we can awesome. get a five-hour stream out Appreciate of you. Appreciate it. Austin, you can't explain the basic observation of boats disappearing over the horizon bottom first. Your only response will be to lie and say it doesn't happen. I feel bad for poor Witsit Jr. I, yeah, that's a little yeah, I mean, they always yeah. have to talk about my beautiful 10-month-old baby because they're yeah, don't talk about people's degenerates children, that could never even that's... get a female. Yeah, but anyway, um, that's also, again, you're so obsessed with talking about flat earth because you can't defend heliocentrism. And I think it's pretty telling that not one response, not one super chat can defend heliocentrism. It's always about flat earth anyway. Yeah. The actual angular, the angular resolution is relative to the reception and propagation angles of what you are observing. And so if you're on the surface and you're six feet above it, but there's a hundred foot building, well, the bottom of that building or the bottom of a boat is closer to your eye level, which means that the propagation reception angles fall below the resolution angle quicker. This is very simple. And of course the attenuation rate is higher at the bottom of the atmos of light because of the turbulence and the absorption rate due to the density of the medium. All right. salad. 30 seconds uh, on this one. Wisco Matt is off topic, but uh, I'll give you 30 seconds. I bet T-Jump believes a phone call was made from the moon to the White House in 1969, and that is believable. We lost technology to get back there. I have no idea about the phone call. I really don't care. We have been to the moon. I don't care about whether, whether or not there was a phone call. I really have no position on. All right. What's it? Why do... Uh, sorry, this is also from a Wisco Matt. Uh, and thank you also, I should say, to Congo44. I'm sorry we didn't read your question because it's ad hominy. And Crackling Crow just sent a winky face winking back at you. Uh, you good-looking super chatter. Thank you for that. All right, so Wisco Matt says, What's it? Why do some physicists say there is a crisis in cosmology? Um, because relativity doesn't match the actual observations. So you have the dark matter problem, which supposedly makes up over 80%, 83% of all matter in the universe, but they don't know what it is, can't define it. And then whenever they actually look at dark matter, halos and galaxy doesn't match the predictions. Also, you have the flatness problem that has to require like uh, mathematically impossible odds to have the perfect energy density for the universe to be flat. You, that's called a fine tuning problem. I could go forever, but basically the cosmological crisis is that they can't explain the dark energy problem or the dark matter problem problem and that space has to be expanding and accelerating four times the speed of light four times faster than the speed of light and they can't explain the causal mechanism or the actual energy for that expansion and they also have a hubble tension problem where the actual uh rate at which it supposedly expands doesn't match with their different methodologies which they use to determine distances and everything else so they're in a true state of crisis because they have no actual causal mechanism for gravity they can't explain dark matter they can't explain dark energy and many That's other things there you go Oh, well, you were right at the end there. So, uh, yeah, let's continue on there. There are actual things we actually see, and oh, we can't explain them. Yet. Oh, no. See, that's always got science doesn't know everything yet. They're like, no, no, right. it refutes your model. You can't offer specificity. You're out of your league. Let's move to the next question. They can't All explain right. it. Therefore, I'm right. Argument from ignorance. Congratulations. It refutes your model. You'll you'll catch up one day, but you'll just never actually argument, publicly see argument it. From All right. My, my, my. Uh... Bro, is, is Biden come out with a new booster, bro? All right, let's continue on. Maurice Smithville, has T-Jump ever had a debate where he doesn't call the other person an idiot? Uh, so they're accusing you of making too many ad hominems throughout the debate. Um, any thoughts on that? And then we'll move on. I exclusively call people idiots when they are significantly intellectually beneath me and not worth my time to actually do any research. So I, I do I'm lots here. of actual You're real debates humble, with like real professors who are really actually intellectually and have valid points, but... Which it is not that he makes up bullcrap science numbers and doesn't understand things and doesn't actually do research and doesn't understand criticisms, and doesn't listen right. to people who actually understand <laughs> things. Sorry, tell I won't let you just go on a big fan of that humility, humility, bro. You guys, Wait, you guys go got all books that I saw one of the you. questions. I'm gonna go grab a book. Okay, go the next ahead. question for me. It's right, it's right there, but uh, no, the next one's for T Jump. So you go Perfect. ahead and uh, yeah, I was gonna say, I think you guys have kind of uh, you've been at each other quite a bit throughout the debate. So I think everybody knows how you feel about each other's thoughts. Uh, you know, nobody's confused about how uh, 
how you feel about that. So uh, donate to my cash app says uh, another one for T jump Austin witless got schooled. Thank you. So you got a fan there. They just uh, came in to say that and have a little fun. So uh, thanks for that. It's ninja wits. is out of his depth. Quick, get him a life jacket. <laughs> well, gee, now that I'm reading all the ad hominem ones. He's going to come back and be like, Ryan, you, you said, all right. Uh, base Theory says, after show on my channel, Base Theory. Oh, du a dual after show. So you can join Base Theory on his after show or Base Theory. I mean, if you want to join me and Ozzy and over on Matters Now, uh, I'm going to put the uh, link in the live description here in just a moment. So uh, if anybody wants to join us over there, uh, they're more than welcome to it. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, what we witnessed here uh, as far as this discussion. What did we witness, everybody? What went down? Now it has returned for the book. We shall return to our epic live discussion. So, uh, you wanted to show us the book. Yeah, someone asked about books that they can read from based on the stuff I'm saying. So I'm going to run through a few books super fast because these are fire books. So this is Robert Lobbert, Harvard, Harvard University. Uh, talks about how ether is inevitable, a different universe. Uh, yeah, Frank Wilkinson, Nobel Prize winner, uh, Lightness of Being. Also talk about how his ether is inevitable. Uh, he's a quack. Longing for the Harmonies, also by Frank Wilkozek, explains that everything's intrinsically vibrational and results in an ether. Seeing red, showing that the uh, red shift distribution of the universe is distinctly impossible within the heliocentric model. Um, that is by Halton Arp. And then this is right. the Nicholson Morley experiment. <laughs> and this is The Stubbornly Persistent Illusion by Stephen Hawking himself, which is a forward of Einstein. Or uh, basically, uh, he writes a forward and then puts all of Einstein's quotes supporting it, which is that the stubbornly persistent illusion that the Earth is in the center of the universe is unavoidable. All right. Uh, For Harry Potter, you need more, more useful information from Harry yeah, Potter. Yeah, Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking is Harry Potter. Perfect rebuttal. All right. So uh, from what I know, T-Jump doesn't have much time. So let's try to keep it to 30 seconds here going forward. T-Jump doesn't For even re realize geocentric doesn't need dark matter. So him explaining it is just irrelevant is another win for Witset. 30 seconds, T-Jump to respond. Again, dark matter is a phenomenon. We see something happening and they need to explain that somehow. They explain it with magic space goo. So that that is their dark matter. They have magic space goo as their dark matter. The extra stuff there that explains the orbits of the planets around galaxies is space goo. There is, they're also claiming there's extra stuff that we don't know about and it's space goo ether. Like I don't, this is not a hard thing to understand. The flurfs and geocentrists also are explaining dark matter with something else. They just don't, they just somehow claim it's not the same problem. All right, that's time there. So next one, Wisco Matt, T-Jump. I have never seen someone act so smug while all of his arguments are fallacious. Appeal to authority, appeal to cons uh, consensus, ad homs, et cetera. Uh, so you got another uh, critic in the uh, live discussion there. Any thoughts for them before we move on? Uh, well, appeals to authority and consensus are only fallacious if they're not actual authorities. And so appealing to the actual authorities isn't fallacious. Stanford Encyclopedia Philosophy uh, on fallacies number nine, I think. Oh, yeah, if you think that it's automatically a valid argument because your perceived authority says it, it's intrinsically fallacious. The evidence has to support it. It's pretty simple. Well, that's that's actually true. Witsit is correct there. The reason yeah. their authorities is because they make the discoveries who are not the flurfs or geocentrists because they don't make the discoveries. The, the reason I like to point out also that like with the dark matter thing, bro, like you're just completely off the mark. If you assume relativity, then dark matter has to exist. That's why many astrophysicists are proposing modified Newtonian dynamics to All replace right, relativity seconds. so that it doesn't need dark matter. Geocentrism doesn't need dark matter at all, and there's a variance of potential explanations without it. Duh. Yeah, right. It needs space goo ether, right? It, it, geocentrism can use that, yes. It, the vibratory oscillations of a background medium. And that explains the same data that dark matter... I'm over your head, bro. Do, does on. that explain the same data dark matter you're is not explaining? In, you're, you don't is that, know anything. Is that a yes or a no? Well, uh, does no, does the space yeah. goo ether explain the same data dark matter is meant to explain? Well, no, no, because dark matter explains the leftover from relativity. The data to explain is the stuff was, moving in the sky. Relativity doesn't work, so you need what? dark matter. If you throw dark matter, matter out, you can explain you're not all answering the, the question. In the sky. All right, we're going to move on to the next question there, guys. Yahooligan is coming in. We're $2 Canadian, uh, an Ontarian fella who has been uh, co-modding here on Modern Day Debates. So give Yahooligan some uh, yahas in the live chat there. He's a fantastic fella and really easy to get on with, as all of us uh, Canucks seem to be. 
uh, generally, except for, you know, the ones I know, I guess, besides myself, right? I'm, I'm, I'm all right, right? And, you know, I'm not one of those awful Canucks, am I? Yeah, I am. <sighs> all right, so, Yahooligan, thank you, Witsit and T-Jump, for the debate. I have no problem arguing for atheism, says OZ and Talks, which is where we're going to have our after show. Uh, I'm going to link that in the live chat in a second here. Esteban Ilbaca, Witsit, dark energy is what we don't know with the physics we do. Relativity. It can be explained by modifying or rewriting relativity. Gravity is the thing either way. Geocentrism can't handle that. Okay. It's so funny that you guys say things you don't understand. Okay. If you, assumed, that, if, if you assumed Newtonian gravity, if you assumed Einsteinian gravity, both of them would necessitate you say the earth could be in the center. I gave you the papers, the math, and the physics. You guys will never rebut it. I've given it to many astrophysics. In addition, okay, they're modifying Newtonian dynamics or replacing relativity because it doesn't work. Well, if the Earth's in the center, there's a variance of issues, our variance of examples of things that could make it work. I can give you, go to my Telegram. You'll see all the links, all the information. Go to my YouTube, right? But for example, if quote unquote gravity is simply an emergent property of the oscillations of the fluid like background medium, that would explain all the observations. And this is an astrophysics professor at the univer at a university in Australia explaining that it would be akin to an ether. Turns out seconds. maybe we overlooked it the whole time. These aren't just random quacks, these are lifelong experts, and the evidence supports it. I encourage you to not listen to someone just claiming that the archaic 1905 example is still true and then jump into 2023 and look at the evidence all right uh so before we move on here we got quite a few more super chats uh t jump if you did need to jump out for a second there uh and have a bathroom break like we all did or well, i gotta go i gotta get i've got dinner plans so i have to go you've got stuff to do okay yep. so um yeah how long do you have uh, potentially to go through the rest of these but you know not any time at all i gotta go like now like two minutes oh, okay all right. Well, that's all right then. Uh, big round of virtual applause for uh, T-Jump. T-Jump, before I let you go, uh, I'll give you the floor. Um, you know, one to two minutes closing statement. Potato. All right. Thank you. Good night. All right. Cool, man. Like, hit me up. We're going to do the five-hour stream. Pay me. You got to send me the PayPal well, first. The money is a Bro, pleasure. check this. Check this. We're going to start a little fun. We'll throw you a few hundred bucks, and you got to sit there for five hours, and you got to talk about all these different things, and then we're going to just clip you up and go viral. Sure. Sounds down. good. All right. Perfect.